We are live. Okay, great. Um, so, yeah. Mythic Odysseys of the Dragon Lords. We had a very bookkeeping session last week as we took care of uh, a number of um, tutorials, essentially, to prepare you for the actual Odyssey part of Odyssey of the Dragon Lords. Everything else up until now, that was baby stuff. Now the true Odyssey begins. Now you approve. You have proven yourselves uh, through your four great labors and have now secured for yourselves the strongest ship in the world. And with that ship, you prepare to set sail for Scorpion Island. All right. Uh, does anybody want to, for a point of DM inspiration, sum up in character with meta knowledge of things that they were not there for? Um, last session, keeping in mind that you will be summing up an entire chapter of a book. That's right. You guys finished chapter four. <laughs> Congrats. Tonight, we start chapter five. Not even no, messed we, around. Chapter not. one, <laughs> chapter one, the boar. Chapter two, all three labor dungeons. Uh, chapter three, everything in Mitros, including... The winds, getting back your boat, the Therius Temple, the, su the, the, the the Storm Hydra. Jesus. Yeah. Uh, chapter 3 is a big one. Uh, and Chapter 4 was one session, so you finished Chapter 4. Congratulations. Like chapter 2 of Rhyme. Yeah, yeah. So nice here you are. Now, chapter 2. Here uh, you are. Um, yeah, so does anybody want to kind of let us know what's going on there? Nobody else wants it. I'll take it. Go for it. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Um, so, um, we picked up uh, last session. Um, we were going over the rules of volleyball. Um, not something I'm intimately familiar with. We didn't go to the beach a lot as a child. Um, but uh, we, we paired off um, uh, picking teams. Uh, I uh, selected Andronicos and, uh, and uh, Kyra play with us um and then it was uh Oren selecting maya and python and let me tell you he hits like a truck whatever that is um <laughs> and uh we we managed to uh we managed to win um come from behind victory uh my favorite and um but we uh those of us who are um player characters got a, got a lucky point um, and then we decided and uh, to have the uh, uh, our beta team uh, play against one another uh, it was a whole horned arrows against the just friends um, I thought it'd be more interesting to place a wager um, so Kyra was like yeah I'm gonna wager you 200 drachme poofy head and I took that wager and Andronica said, "Oh, I'm going to uh, throw paint in your face if you lose." And uh, I said, "Okay, good terms. I think my team's going to win." I, I wagered uh, on the Just Friends to win, and the Just Friends just plain lost. It was bad. It was ugly. Um, I was out a good bit of money, and um, also got paint in my face. But such is uh, the beauty of prestidigitation. You can just wipe that away. Um, following uh, our festivities, uh, we uh, uh, had a, a fitful sleep, and then the next morning were interviews for the uh, the ship's crew that we're taking on board. Pretty much everyone made the cut. They, had, they brought something to the table, uh, with the exception of a um, very clingy um, individual, real fan of oh my god, um, that we sort of redirected. Uh, in, in, uh, away from us and then also um everyone from uh, um the, the people's heroes uh but uh but crusher decided to uh to not join us um but uh i don't know we'll have to see how that goes uh, an alcoholic bear might be an asset might be a liability you know i'm going to have to have um grunts over the wine so we shall see um and we were further uh, bestowed knowledge regarding our 
future access to magical items. Um, Vulcan has given us the uh, Kelladone, um, the clockwork uh, creation, combination Pelican and Amazon drone, um, that will be able to go back and forth between the Mithril Forge, um, help us uh, acquire our special orders. And also, we're going to have to hunt down Gaius, that prick. Uh, he managed to steal uh, a piece of the Antithakira, uh, which was specifically constructed to help us navigate the seas. Um, we're going to have to calibrate that um, anytime we're on land. Sidon doesn't want us finding his, uh, his, uh, his hideout. Well, we know what the hideout is, but anyway. Um, one more thing to take care of. One more, one more score to settle with him. Um, and that sort of brings us to now. Um, I think we're still making some final preparations, working some things out, and should be uh, pushing off um, soon. All right, yeah. Take your point of DM inspiration. Um, before we go, um, I don't know if we were imminently set to leave. I know we had sort of got reached that point. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if there's time before we have to leave with the tides for there to be some last minute research to be done at the at the city library. Um, sure. What do you hope? What are you hoping to research? So what I'm wanting to research because we still have. Four gods, since kind of is here as sort of a question mark at this point. Okay. Um, that are still kind of in rough shape, and I want to see what information I could find about, you know, you know, great creatures that might be out there in the Sorlian seas that we can hunt down and kill to sacrifice. Because you know, if Pythor is you know hanging out with us, we'd probably want him at full strength, um, and also get. A little bit more information about um, Hexia, her horde, and what she might have, if there's any information about her. Because mm -hmm. that could be some pretty dope resources we might be able to, you know, get a hold of, you know, a green, a green dragon's horde. Okay, okay. Um, hmm. How much time are you willing to delay your journey to research? Well, in the. I would like to figure those things out, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I would like to put it to the group and get their feedback because I, Julian's thinking is one, you know, beefing up our assets, helping the gods since they helped us defeat the storm kaiju many sessions back. Mm -hmm. But also, since Orin was concerned about resources, seeing the feasibility of, you know, taking out Hexia, she's not a good creature. Uh, you know, was killing uh, Pythor's children, and um, you know, was running the Emerald Scale, and you know, it just might be you know a way to earn some money. And after presenting that to the, you know, the, the senior staff, as it were, getting their opinions. Okay. Maybe uh, Moxena can help you learn some more about Hexia with the criminal. Yeah, I mean, Moxana, the... Moxana did work for uh, the Emerald Scale and for, um, uh, for Hexia, so she oh, definitely she, has... so Moxana is joining us. I wasn't sure on that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Moxana, she, yeah she, she's not going to let me uh, go on this thing without her. Okay, yeah. All right. Uh, but yeah, she could tell you um, she lives on an island. The island is called the Island of the Dragon. Uh, the entire island is considered her lair. And it is located in the Forgotten Seas, which are currently too dangerous to navigate without oh. a fully restored uh, Antikythera. Okay. Um, the as a as a businesswoman, uh, Hexia has the majority of her assets invested, uh, but she does sleep on a mountain of uh, of treasure. So that's like, I guess, her petty cash fund. Spends on a bed, she just lays on it. Yeah, the, the money she would have spent on a bed, she just lays on it. 
Yeah, yeah. So she she uh she's fantastically rich. Uh but generally uh her money is reinvested into her uh network, essentially. Okay, that is uh, uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic for dragons, but uh, uh, for green, oh, well, but for green, green dragons, for green, green dragons, dragons are smart. yeah, they're, they're clever yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, it's actually yeah, it's it's on it's all brand for a green dragon for sure. Uh, they you know they're lawful evil, so. Uh-huh. Um, okay. Um, in that case, is there like uh-huh. a sort of a hit list we can put together of potential? Oh you know, yeah, monsters out there. that are known to dwell in the Cerulean Seas. Uh, there is the Chimera Queen, the progenitor of the Chimera um, species. Uh, she has her own island where she maintains her nest. Um, there is, is a, bo- it... a bounty on her head issued by King Acastus. Or, or her is heads. she uh, related, to, related to a deity like the Storm Hydra and the Boar? Yes, them. she was uh, created by Lutheria, who okay. one of her many titles is the Mother of Monsters. Um, there, there was a time where Lutheria experimented with creating uh, new species and new life, and the Chimera was one of her first uh, attempts of combining uh, several of her favorite creatures into one. Uh, the Chimera Queen is the, the first and strongest of all the Chimeras. Uh, there is also a creature known as the Manticore King, um, who dwells on one of the islands um, and is said to be essentially the the the, the or- originator of the Manticore species. Uh, there is allegedly also Lutheria. Oh, also Lutheria. Um, there is also a creature on Scorpion Island uh, who is known as the Ancient Scorpion. Uh, he is the first um, centaur who was cursed to become a scorpion, and his ra- his outrage and his resentment was so powerful that um, he cried out to uh, the gods for um, retribution, and Lutheria uh, rendered him a massive uh, monstrosity so that he could uh, take out his frustrations upon the the waking world. Um, allegedly, though, he was put to sleep uh, and he just sort of slumbers beneath the desert of uh, Scorpion Island. But it is said that he could wake at any time or perhaps at the behest of Lutheria. And begin to lay waste to the world. There's yeah. three Lutheria uh, creatures that we can take sparks from. Yeah. Um, let's see. Are there any others that history and legend would know about? Um. Let's see. In the forgot, you're asking about this uh, Cerulean Seas, though. Hmm. Yeah. Um, great behemoths uh, live on Fire Island. These are uh, massive dragon like creatures who lack any of the magic or intelligence of dragons, but they are very similar. Uh, what? We don't. What? Anyways, so these massive behemoths um, that live on Fire Island are, are pretty impressive, but none of them are in like the class of like legendary um they are a favored export uh of the um isle of the or sorry the it is a popular export from fire island and the most um the most behemoths are exported to uh themis themis real big on dino riding they like dinosaurs quite a bit so um fire island does do an export business with themis so they are uh, in a trade agreement, I guess, with the uh, uh, with the Isle of Themis. Um, what do they receive from Themis? Um, generally, they receive uh, s- male slaves who um, have outlived their usefulness, or uh, women 
uh, from Themis who have um, basically gone against the queen. Uh, what happens to them when they go to Fire Island? They are more than likely eaten or thrown into the volcano. So, um, good times there. So, it might it might help to go there first to see if we can get some allies for to go against Themis as well. Mm. Speaking that is a good idea. Oh, like before you go to Themis, go to Fire Island. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Mm, yeah, maybe. I mean, if there was a recent batch of uh, prisoners, uh, they would certainly have the greatest knowledge at that point in time. Uh -huh. Yep. Mm. And then Aresia has all manner of crazy stuff going on because it's basically like, you know, another big part of the mainland. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, they, they are currently dealing with a Minotaur warlord who is bolstering an incredible amount of troops uh, and raising a huge army. Um, the city of Aresia has never been successfully... Um, the, the walls have never been successfully breached, so they're pretty confident that they're going to be okay no matter what. But um, that's currently what they're engaged with locally, is um, there's a Minotaur warlord causing problems over there. So yeah, I would say that you could easily collect that information, um, not just from the library, but you have some of the brightest minds uh, in, you know, in all of Mitros on your ship. Here, here. Yeah. So you have you have Sibo, um, you have uh, Good old Chandris. Chandris. Yeah, I think you have Farfalla. So yes. Oh, sorry, Falana, Falana. Yeah, Falana. Falana and Versi, we should keep them apart. Yeah. Wait, wait, why is that? No, no reason, no yeah. reason, Sibo. Keep, keep, keep eating your mags and cheese. Uh, it, I, I don't think anyone's picked up on uh, anything from Versi yet, so I think I think we're, so we're what okay. what we need to do now is, let me check this here calendar. Good God, it's been a while since we updated the calendar. Yeah, what's the date? Oh. All right. Uh, let's see. Calendar clock. Uh, gosh. Back in the month of May in real life, it was the 16th of Kyrian. Mm -hmm. Um, you guys are currently way past that. Uh, you're cruising into Valion, and I would assume that, huh, your business with the uh, great games, blah, 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 getting the ship ready. We'll go ahead and set you at the 17th. There we go. So you're on the seventeenth of Valion in the year four ninety nine. Is that like is that the ninth month or the eighth month? Hmm. Those are great questions. Uh, hold on. Uh, let's see. There are twelve months, and you're on the eighth month right now. It's eight. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So you're doing great for time. Doing great. The, the 500 years of peace, you know, uh, the earliest it could possibly end would be the end of this year, which is like four and a half months from now. Four days of travel each. Yeah. Uh, each island, and uh, good thing there's no, uh, it doesn't take us a week to rest anymore. Oh, that's for damn sure. So. Yeah. Hmm. All right. You guys ready? Uh, uh, one final thing, sorry. Sure, I, sure. I keep delaying us. Would, would this be metagaming, or would it, this be okay, given what my plans are, what Julian's plans are? Could he buy a shield and a breastplate before we set sail? No, that's fine. I mean, yeah. it makes more sense for you to plan ahead for character builds than to spontaneously wake up one day and be like, now my paladin's a warlock, don't ask me any questions. <laughs> well, yeah. that was an awesome dream you had. You yeah, said, yeah, uh, exactly. Kind of like, kind of like when Bubbles became a warlock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a little bit like that. Yeah, yeah. Or like, um, I still remember this guy I grouped with that took a love. He took Tempest Cleric, and he never, he would, he, he's like, I don't know who my god is. I just needed to max out my lightning bolts. And I was like, cool. Oh my goodness. Oh my cool. goodness. Wait, do I know um, this person? Or is no, it somebody else? No, somebody else. Okay. 
Yeah. I guess if Julian's going to do do that, I'll probably go and and uh, if I can get a um um a bow. A bow? Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, longbow. Yeah. Yeah, I mean you're in the largest oh, city. Longbow. You're in the largest city on the mainland, so I mean, you know, you could definitely purchase anything from the player's handbook at at cost. So. Now, Andronicos, you feel that your egg, not the one that, you know, not your egg like you laid it, but the egg that was found for you um, by your familiar um, is very close to hatching. Yeah, feel the little, feel the little kicks. Yeah. Uh, we know this because the player's handbook told us that it hatches when you hit level 7, and you're very, you're very close to milestone, so... But uh, in game, yes, it's uh, you occasionally you just kind of sense a bit of awareness coming from the egg. Well, I'm sure uh, Elpis hasn't been around a lot because he's been carrying around the egg in his mm -hmm. in his little uh, dragonling papoose, I guess. Well, uh, uh, he is a he is a little he's like a dragonette, right? Because he's yeah, a, he's a yeah. he's a pseudo dragon. So. Yeah, so these are the size of like American footballs. Yeah, he's, he's yeah. a real strong pseudo dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I imagine he almost has like a little backpack that he like kind of keeps it in and kind of carries it around. I feel um, like it have to be it have to be below him though, because if it was uh, on his back, it interfere with his wings. True, true. Okay, a little baby. He's like a, he's like a stork. Is it like a stork? Yeah. Like under his neck, yeah. like a Saint yeah. Bernard. So as a bronze as a bronze dragon egg, um, if you put your hands on it. And you have hair; it does make your hair stand up, like one of those electro orbs. Conveniently, you know I don't. So. Yeah. <laughs> I, I occasionally do, do his tentacles like kind of like people like float. static electricity with. Oh yeah, it's definitely a static electricity generator for sure. Yeah. Well, right, let's. Does it do that again. cool like light up your fingertip thing when you touch it, like those orbs do? Um, you get your fingers near it, you see like a little spark come towards your finger. When when the baby is kind of active, yeah, you get that cool like lightning orb effect. Awesome. Yeah, which uh, here I activated on on the wider world map, so you can see. There you go. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, look at that. Um, Crash. Oh, no. Would it be? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Tom. No, no, go for it. I, I'm just saying because we just switched maps and I'm on this laptop, so it's kind of. Oh. <laughs> yeah. It, it's going to be an exciting night for you, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, tools are probably pretty easy to come by. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, thieves' tools, those are probably pretty specific and probably pretty carefully guarded. Is that something I might be able to acquire or no? You literally <laughs> recruit. You literally recruited the highest level like thief in the city for your B team. She just gives you a set of thieves' tools. Oh, okay. All right. It, yeah. Oh, you haven't been in a game of B team before. Oh yeah, it's nice. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's nice. Like because because it it, it respects the fact that your allies are fully realized. Um, you know, thought constructs within the world. So, uh, I do need to buy my tools as well. Uh, okay. I learned from my book, uh, Mason's Tools and Tinker's Tools, but I haven't actually picked any up yet. So oh well, I need to get Tinker's tools as well as Smith tools. So let's let's go do some tool shopping. All right. Uh, yeah. You guys uh, again? Any of the anything from the player sandbook? Any of the basic stuff from player sandbook you can pick up at cost? This is a good idea to purchase equipment now. Uh, otherwise, you will have to wait for the Amazon drone um, to bring the goods to you. So, uh, so the Keladone can function as essentially a player's handbook shop um, but you have to wait for its weekly visit so there's going to be like that turnaround time is there anything else we want to think we want to try and get then tools I mean, we should probably just have like one of each tool just stored on the ship yeah not a bad I idea mean, if we've got the funds I mean it wouldn't be a bad idea but um, I think for some of us that may be doing work, it might be useful to have their own. Um, no, no, what I'm saying is uh, have one of each on the ship, and if you're using it, have your own. But, like, what oh, we're not... Spare, what we don't have just spares for the crew to use and things like that. Of course, yeah. yeah. All right. 
putting that 3,000 drop made work. Is um is Vulcan still around, or is he going back to the forge about the same time everyone else left? Oh, but for sure he's he's had enough mm. of Mitros, and he's mm. yeah, he's said he's. I I am thinking as much, but I thought I might catch him before he went off and was going to say something about the uh, trying to do the the wing sandals bit. But I'll just let that. Be. I mean, I, uh, if we have the Caledonia right now, then we could give her some stuff just to take to the Vulcan before we set off, and then hopefully she finds us. Have... I don't have anything prepared, and it's going to be a while before I can actually get up to speed with making my own things, so it's just just let it take its course at this point. And I can still communicate with them via the book as we do. There is that, but uh, also it's one of those things where you know, if, if, when you bug a relative too many times, you're like, well, god damn it, what do you want? Right, so I'm right. Let that go. Oh, I, there's something I did want to ask him, um, and I wanted to see if he can make something out of these Metals. No, yeah. Oh, um, Sibo has his book. Mm -hmm. well, I'll communicate that back and forth with Vulcan about the metals. Yeah. Uh, which metals are these that you have? Um, so what? What I it's pretty much all the medals that I won during the Great Games. Oh, literally your medals from the Great yeah, Games. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, they would more than likely be used to create something related to luck and or um, skill essentially so the easiest thing for him to make would be essentially a luck stone it's pretty good yeah. um hmm. okay Either that, uh, so with skill, is there something that would, would there be, would it be able to make something that gives you, um... Like proficiency in a skill, or a plus yeah. two to an existing skill, uh, something like that, yeah. Proficiency in a skill, would there be one for that? Uh, as long as it was a skill related to, like, the great games, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. But since it would be granting, like, an actual skill, and not, like, a passive, like, small bonus to a skill it would probably require attunement i mean that's fine i don't i'm yeah. not attuned to anything right now mm. Mm. it might be good to get uh proficiency in, in perception yeah i mean that'd be great yeah as a as a wisdom user okay mm -hmm. get my eyes better I'll probably see if he can. I'll ask him to do see if he can do something like that. All right. Now, how many um, how many medals you're sending over? And what are the qualities of them? Or, so or not have, qualities, but the you know what are they? First, second, so, or third place medals? We have. I have two uh, first place. Um, well, it's team first place. Mm -hmm. So two of those, and then I have uh, one. Preliminary first place and one preliminary second place. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. All right. Andronicus wears all of his medals around like he's Michael Phelps. Nice, nice. Uh, all right. She goes to Andronicus and says, I can't do that. Okay, anything else before you set out? I will actually probably drop Julian for now from my uh, book and add Valis. Okay. And, okay. Um, and yeah, so I'll do that and then I'll probably communicate with Anora and figure out who I'm going to drop for Julian back again later on. But for now, I want Anora, Valis, and Vulcan. Okay. Does your book ever upgrade to adding more people? It's, it? Yeah, it's based off proficiency bonus. Okay. The more proficient I get with my book, I think I can add more people. That's not, that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. As you guys are shopping the city and making the preparations, an individual does approach uh, you in the market. So who is in the market? Just Andronicos and Julian, or are you guys all kind of doing a, a group shopping uh, outing, kind of making sure you don't forget anything? 
And I probably would have been out shopping because I went to get that longbow as well. I don't think I would have been there. I'm with Orin. Right. Orin and I are, are uh, going to Valus. Alright, cool, cool, cool. So, as you guys are out and about... You guys have... Hmm, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure this will be fine. <laughs> Alright. Um, so, as you guys are out and about, you are approached in the marketplace by a striking individual. Um, her otherworldly beauty, the air of magic coming off of her, you immediately know that she is no mortal. This is a nymph. Uh, and she hails to you and says, um, You there, you three, are you, are you the heroes of prophecy? Um, you might yeah. who's asking. Who is asking? Uh, and she smiles and says, uh, I am known as Echo. I, the the low-hanging fruit there would be to say, come again, but I think that'd be a bit uh, insulting. Uh, um, she seems insulted that you do not know her. Um, Siva, you would, because, you know, starting history. Do you guys see the picture or no? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we'll okay. see the picture. Yes. Oh man, full art. Yeah. Uh, she says, um, I'm surprised you haven't heard of me. I. It does not matter. You are in possession of the Ultros, the greatest military ship in the history of this world. I would like to travel with you. I would like to bend the ear of your leader. And tell them of a worthy quest. Who is it exactly that you're seeking to speak with? Sable. Well, among your number, it is said that um, you all share the burden of leadership equally. But it is in my experience that there's always one who stands above all others. Well, we can certainly pass along a message if we think it's worthwhile. You have a good George. It will experience. be worth your while. I possess a great fortune. And I am willing to pay handsomely for assistance with this small matter. Can I insight her on the whole I'm wealthy and I really need your guys' help business get a better sense of if she has the means and also what kind of help we're looking at, are we talking about okay. like yeah, yeah. Give me an assassination or are we talking about piracy? Uh, she is a godlike being, so you have advantage. All right. Oh, um, the small task is definitely not small, but she is confident that she has um, compensation that would make it worth your while. Can I tell what type of nymph she is? Uh, she is an Oread. The night okay. one. The star, yeah, stars. Stars, yeah. I think we can bring this to the rest of the group. And Julian sort of looks to Adronikos and Maya to get their, um, reaction. Whether they're like, uh-uh, nope, we're not, we're not asking with her. Or like, sure, why not? It doesn't hurt to hear them out, I don't think. Yeah, it doesn't hurt to hear them out. Well, you have a few errands to run here. You're welcome to tag along, or you can meet us at the Ultros in an hour, shall we say. Hmm. Yes. I will meet you there in an hour. That will give me time to prepare. We will see you shortly. All right. So, Job, would it be better if I keep you on one map, or is it okay if we jump back and forth? 
It's okay to jump back and forth. All right, I don't want smoke to come out of that out of the laptop. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no. Okay. All right, we'll move these peeps uh, further down. There we go. All right. Uh, Val's probably going back to the panels by now. Okay. So, um, do you fill in um, Echo, or sorry, do you fill in SIBO and crew about Echo, or do you get back oh, just yeah. in time for the visit? Well, I mean, if we, I'm not quite sure where in the process we are, but like if we mm -hmm. can kind of pick up the pace in terms of what we're getting. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, you, you're not buying anything crazy. So, yeah, you could just pick, you know, you'd, you you could even, with your B list celebrity status, you could even place the order and then they will deliver it to the ultras for you. Oh, okay. Yeah. We'll I mean, honestly, thing. at this point in your careers, you probably didn't need to do the shopping yourself. So you, you could have yeah, just. Yeah, but said, is it like same day delivery or are we going to have to yeah, wait? Yeah, it's, 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 it's literally they'll send a child. The, to running across the city to deliver your goods so or you know a bunch of dudes will have like a little chariot full of goods and they'll ride it over i mean you guys you guys are like minor league athletes that's the level of like you're like so fam you're like you're like youtubers with a billion subscribers that's how famous you guys are yeah all right then. yeah yeah you're not like a-list celebrities, but you're very, you're very famous, especially here at Vitros. If you guys are curious what that feels like, we can talk about it off stream. But uh, I'll let you know how that feels. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Oh, you've you've met someone like that. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then we hear about your date with PewDiePie. Yeah. That's fantastic. All right, so back at the harbor, Echo uh, arrives. Uh, but before she does, you let Sibo. Sibo, give me a history check. Oh, yeah. Sibo, <laughs> you've, you've heard about Echo before, right? Um, I Yes, yeah. I've definitely heard of. <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, you, don't, you don't have to lie. I'm oh, just saying. Okay. Like... I, I know of the... Uh, the the Greek or Roman god Echo, but I don't know about so. So I recognize the name from from that mythology. All right. So um, she is an ancient Oread who is constantly trying to convince Mitros to go to war with Aresia. Um, in fact, several of the wars that were um, fought with Aresia, she either funded or manipulated uh, mm. into happening. Damn. She is she has a bad reputation as a warmonger and a well-known hatred for the nation of Aresia. The reason for this uh, let me see this history check. Okay. Is, uh, uh, Falana, is Falana with you? <laughs> I mean she would like to be, you know. Uh, but yeah, between the two of you, you would know that a long time ago, there was a god named Narcissus, who was the god of beauty. And um, yeah, basically, when the first war ended, the big one against the Titans, Asia Peace and all jazz, Narcissus staged a competition to choose a woman worthy of being his wife. Um, his suitors were to bring him the silver antlers of an, ex uh, of an elusive white stag. Many of the most powerful influential women in the world participated in the contest, but the victor was an Oread huntress named Echo. Tragically, she was never able to claim her prize. Queen Calliope of Aresia had become obsessed with Narcissus, and she took him captive and fled back to her city, where he has remained for the last 500 years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so Echo has, over the last 500 years, tried to steal him back. Um, but she can't even get to him, such as the impenetrable defenses of Aresia. So if she has a job for you, it probably involves taking this sweet ass warship and yeah. going to Aresia and starting a fight. Well, right, so. I mean, I'm sure that's what she would like, but it doesn't have to. But 
Yeah, well, I, I mean, yeah. right now with the great games, we let a bunch of regions just into Mitros, and because there's like there's a ceasefire right now between them, right? Well, the great games is a political thing, so yeah. Like you, you know, people would show up even if even if there was a war, they probably would okay. have sent some people, because it's also it's a political thing, but it's also a literal performance for the gods. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Now, what do you know of Narcissus historically? Um, Narcissus is the god of beauty, and uh, he kind of just showed up around the same time that the um, the five gods did, um, but was separate from the five gods, and in no way um, offered to help uh, one side or the other. He made remained completely neutral in the first war. Um, basically just spent the time uh, drinking and making merriment and um, avoiding conflict. Sometimes you need that. Yeah. Mm. His blessings involve providing the prodigy feat for new characters. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Alright, so you see Echo ma making her way through the crowd. She is tall. And beautiful, and powerfully built, and people uh, kind of, I don't want to say flee, but they definitely make way for her as she uh, moves through the crowd. She sees you all, and your um, completely uh, ostentatious table, and she says, You, you were good on your word, so here I am. Let us talk of business. An adventure, and great deeds that need doing. I would have communicated to everyone before she showed up, so you all have the info. Uh, all right then. Um, do you wish to uh, um, speak out here? Would you rather be uh, on board with some privacy? Uh, she shrugs and says. Um, My, my business is often known, though there is some sensitive information with this uh, story. And she notices uh, uh, Kyra over there. She says, uh, oh, Kira, it is you. And Kira nods at her, feigning that she knows who this person is. and says, it is me. <laughs> and you... Are you? Hmm. And Echo just sort of stares at her and then turns her attention back to uh, those of you who are summoned here. Well, um, I'm not one for airing my dirty laundry, if I can help it. Um, shall we all uh, adjourn to the captain's quarters? Okay, yeah, yeah. So, um... Yeah, we'll theater mind that for now. Uh, so you guys yeah, go to sorry. the yeah, yeah yeah oh no no worries no worries. Um, you guys go to the uh, captain's quarters, wherein you um, it's not not huge not a huge space, um, but it's 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 pretty big. And once on board, um, Echo says, "Fine, we are behind closed doors. Now I will put forth to you what I would like. The oh, ship." would be an excellent distraction if it were to sail into the Eurasian Harbor. You, as great champions of Mitros and of Versi, the Oracle, could demand an audience with the Queen. Once inside, you could discover the location of God Narciss. And perhaps then help me rescue him. Kyra leans uh, into you, my answers. It's a Narciss. He's, he's one of he's one of the the 
when the gods um actually this is a question mm -hmm. is narciss a relative of of the five because i know that you know vulcan and mitros had kids and kids are gyra valis and pythor mm -hmm. Narci narciss is just came out of nowhere i mean there's no official material out there that, that says he is okay would it okay then i guess it's more of like you people is the like the consensus uh, the assumption that he is like net like you know people when they when they think of narcissus um no i think they think of him the same way that people used to think of helios um in so much as like there are you know there are other gods like um fengari the the moon is like a god like they're like b-list gods compared to like mm. the, the five gods kind of thing okay so i'll i'll just talk, turn to kira and say uh um he's, he's the the god that lives in parisia mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i'm gonna weren't go check on the when, crew weren't you paying attention when sibo gave us that uh nope okay bye but you really <laughs> need to ask <laughs> Alright, so so she exits the yeah, she exits the captain's cabin. I would assume Versi's pro probably not there either. So it's just no. the five of you and Echo. So at, at this, this point. point. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Uh yeah, Echo says, Well, I am prepared to pay you a tremendous amount of Jacme if you are able to locate Narcissus. And the fortunes of a king or queen, if you're able to extract him successfully. So you believe he's just a hostage? A hostage god? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I won't... We, we won't start a war for you. But if this is true, he needs to be released. Yes, see, you understand. You understand. If nothing else, he could prove a valuable ally. That's assuming that uh, Lady Echo here wishes to share him with us. I he is not my property. Really... Well... I... I, you have your own vested interests. I'm sure you'd rather spend time with him than have him trotting around with us. There's also the possibility he doesn't want to leave. I mean, if he's a god. Why would he want... What? Uh, I mean, she looks over at you, Sibo, and she is furious by the words that you are saying. Hey. Uh, what, my, what my friend is probably getting at is that as a god who during the Great War, decided that it was best to revel and drink. Perhaps he has become accustomed to that lifestyle. That is what he has had. Revel for. and drink? Yes. That is he, the he is simply too beautiful of heart and mind and body to engage in such bloody acts as war. I am merely going by what... Uh, what the information has been shared. I have no first-hand experience, unlike you, Lady Echo. Actually, that, that's something I would I'd be nice, nice to hear about. Um, how what you do have a history with with uh, the god Narciss. Uh, would you have any stories about how he was or how he is back there? All we have is history. It would be great to have a first-hand. Um, Experience. She uh she blushes very hard, and she says, um, "Well, I, I, I haven't really ever gotten to spend much time with him. I to look upon him is to be nearly destroyed by his absolute beauty." Oh, I don't oh, understand like that ben. Yeah, blazing man. Yeah, he's definitely. Yeah, blazing. They might be related. She laughs, blazing Ben. <laughs> he is nothing compared to Narciss. But, um, 
and she kind of like does the thing where you p poke your two like index fingers together. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you you maybe you maybe don't have a good argument here. It's just like, well, we were to get married, and because I found the silver antlers, and before I ever got a chance, he was taken away from me. I think mm. it's. I think it's. Uh, yes. I don't think there's any reason we don't go and find. I know. Yeah. When would you be leaving for Arisia? Well, that's a good question. We were originally going to be setting sail for Scorpion Island. Hmm. We also have personal matters to attend to. What about after Scorpion Island? Julian will kind of look sideways at Maya. Well, I do. I do think we should go to Fire, Fire Island before we handle our personal. So, um, and if if I mean the the reward. Or funding, or whatever we have, if it turns out there is something there and we do find him, could help us with that. Agreed. Well, that was what you were concerned about, Oren, about uh, keeping uh, keeping the troops happy. Well, it sounds like uh, we have an agreement that uh, we will um, set sail for Arisha as soon as our affairs are in order. On Scorpion Island. Hmm. Confirmation, Arisia is still in the Gulf, correct? Yes. Okay. She says, excellent. Then I shall travel with you until it is time to go to Arisia. Yes, but do you have a B-team ability? That's a, that's a good question. I'm, I'm... She scowls at you and says, um, my loyalties are my own. Well, I see you want to spend all your time question. on the ship, then. <laughs> Tell me, how good are you at rowing? <laughs> Her eyes widen. And she says, if you require a rower, I will have one of my servants accompany me, and they will row in my stead. Oh, she, she, she has her own B-team. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I, in a more serious uh, tone, I suppose, we would like to be able to, to put you to use while you're on the ship. We, we can't just have you... It doesn't set a good precedence for the crew members to see someone who doesn't have to contribute. I, I don't mean to... I don't mean to seem like we're trying to use you or anything. It's just... It'd be good for everyone to see that even those that come with us need to well, provide uh something. Well, you, from what from what I heard, you're excellent uh, hunter and, and tracker. You, you're the one who found the the silver stag's uh, mm -hmm. antler. Would you be able, Would you be willing to uh, maybe help train some of our maybe in their downtime if they want to train a bit, teach them some tracking and hunting I skills? I suppose I could do that. I'm pretty sure I know. I definitely know. Uh, uh, Corinna will probably appreciate that. Agreed. Mm -hmm. Certainly. If it helps keep up appearances on your ship, then that is what I will provide. And uh, are, is it just you, Lady Echo, that's coming with this? Or are you bringing your retinue with you? Uh, she says, I will bring two servants, and they will row for you. And uh, will they, you be providing uh, uh, supplies, or do we need to uh, rustle up some more? She raises an eye, eyebrow and says, um, I will be providing uh, whatever fare is necessary for room and board. If possible, I would like quarters of my own. At this point, with the layout of the ship, do we know if that's a possibility? 
the layout yeah. of the ship. What? Hold on a second. Well, I don't need to necessarily. Do we get to see the ship, ship map now? Map map, right? <laughs> oh boy, like, is it like, happening? I was just waiting for the magic word. I was gonna wait until you were actually at sea, cause the the map itself is the sea. But it's fine. We got it here. Hold on. All right. Mm. I'm causing all kinds of problems tonight. No, no, no. This would have happened eventually. All right. So, do that. And we gotta do this real quick. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see. Open. Open. Oh, my foundry's running so slow. It was doing this while I was prepping, too. Mm -hmm. Alright, let's see what I can do. just need to swap out the sails. That's it. Come on, Foundry. You could do it. Alright. Alright, let me load you guys into the, uh, the Ultras here. Alright, so you may need to drag yourselves out to the map to see. Do you have a location I should drop in? Because I, I usually make uh, them walls. Like here? Would be good. Cut, cut. Anywhere in like the middle of the... There you yeah. go. And you dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so this map has walls uh, and teleporters. But I don't think the teleporter... I think they have to update the teleporters. But I can just... Because you're not currently in a battle or anything, I can take down the walls. I just so you guys I can see. see. The... Hmm? No, they work. They still work. Oh, they do? Okay. But yeah, I can take off the uh, teleporters for now because you're not like having to run back and forth and do all that kind of stuff. So, right. Hold on. There we go. All right, so on the ship, uh, obviously that's the deck, and then you got the rowing, and then you got the lower deck below that, and then there's one more deck below that that we don't have a map for, which is where like the animals are kept and your cargo and supplies and whatnot. Um, so there's the yeah, essentially four four maps for this big ass ship. Uh, those of you who provided me a map of your room um you could find your room down in the um the crew quarters okay that was the other thing i didn't do mine yet because i didn't know if there was if w there was talk about whether andronicus would be captain and in that case i didn't know if there was a different thing I oh yeah for the captain's quarters captain's quarters is over here Wait, yeah i don't think that's happening there andronicus i don't know if you I don't know. <laughs> so whoever is whoever is the captain, you get there, and we could certainly do an overlay stamp that is a cooler captain's quarters than that. But that is the captain's quarters. Okay. Um, so the honestly, captain's quarters it's, it's, looks like it's actually small. For a so thing. The, for so the, thing, the thing about the captain's quarters is these quarters down here um, generally have like you know these bigger ones uh, are like suites that can be divided up further or could have like two people in them uh, or whatnot uh, um the, the the ship has been refitted uh with that in mind of having these larger rooms um before when it was esther's ship esther had a nice big room everyone else just had a big area like all this was like training area and sleeping area and like communal eating area um, but when you guys went through and retrofitted it, you added areas to have like kind of private rooms to better accommodate yourselves, your um, companions, and any potential uh, people that you picked up along the way. Okay, so then do we want to pick a captain? And if so, we should probably do that before we sail. Hmm. You know, as presidency in water vehicles is you. Uh, yeah, but the only one that can navigate is me. Yeah. That feels like a... So, I mean, I mean, Andronicus! Yeah, that's seriously. Good. But also, Aster did not steer the ship, nor did he 
navigate this That's shit. true. Yeah. He also o was an Also, asshole. something to keep in mind. Um, he was an asshole, yes. <laughs> no matter who the captain is, if the captain's a PC, you're going to need a backup captain, essentially, because yeah. there's going to be a lot of times where you guys will need the ship to kind of go on without you, sort of thing. Yep. Yeah. yeah, so we could just, like, all of us are captain, and then we choose, like, a helmsman. Or something. Yes. So and then um, give that 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 room to the helmsman. So so Sibo really want a government by committee. Cause, so hear me out. I, we can discuss things reasonably before we go into battle, but we want one person giving orders in case of a fight. Now meta, it doesn't matter if we're playing a TTRPG, but. That is sort of the logic behind having one person in charge, typically, in the command setting. So, so Sibo has a, a, a structure from his days in Noriandi, which has a captain plus three masters of, uh, or, you know, lieutenants. One is focused on the trip, the navigator, the people with the riggings, they're, they're over that. One is over the people, which is the rowers. The cooks, the medics, all of those people, and the other is of the boat. So your people that are mending the ship, the carpenters, the um, um, people guess, in charge of the anchors another, and things like that. I guess another question would be like during during like how does ship combat work? Like, will if someone did have proficiency in water vehicles, like would they be able to make a water vehicles check to figure out why, what might be the best, uh, you know, water? Uh, maneuverability yeah. strategy for this situation and things like that so then they'll be able to you know yeah i guess that's that a good point like is there any captain specific checks that we would want to choose whoever's best at <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's up to you guys Um, as far as like, sorry, as far as NPCs that meet all those requirements, um, Moxena has, uh, a lot of seafaring experience, uh, having essentially done some piracy, um, before settling down in, uh, Mitros. So I she... don't really feel comfortable. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't feel uh, comfortable having Moxena be Having here. a near feral Medusa take over our ship. Okay, okay. Let me see. Hmm. Who else that you recruited could even possibly could, fit those well, requirements? Well, I, I know that I know that's a concern, but could um could Maya and I insight her, or one of us could insight her with advantage mm -hmm. to sort of get a read on whether or not she would mute me or whether she'd be reliable? Because I mean, how, she, I was, she the would, experience is good. And she has leadership skills, and a lot of the crew are of Pythor. her. Hmm? What? <laughs> Pythor. Pythor well, some of the crew is... I don't know if he's necessarily leadership material. We did sort of depose him for his daughter. Yeah, that's true. And a pretty decent amount of the crew was Mercy? already loyal to Maxina too. Yes. Versi. Uh, Versi does. Uh, despite being um. Uh, you know, an aquatic nymph uh, does not actually have any seafaring knowledge. That will make a lot of sense. She doesn't really need need it because she could just swim. It's, it's, right. Guys, it's clearly Telemachus. I don't know why we're arguing here. I oh mean, my goodness! That's a good point, Captain Telemachus. Telemachus, uh, not really qualified. Has um, never really done much sailing. He was, uh, you know, he lived inland uh, on the mainland. Um, Hallister has uh knowledge of ships uh worked on when uh when he was in his teens but um you know decided Actually, to stay in metros what about, what about like chandra study chandra and his, would... his first mate could be uh <laughs> could be a uh, shamrocks shamrocks yeah uh chandra understands how a boat needs to be run and he definitely has like you know um organizational skills to do it but feels that that would take away from his primary purpose of uh, providing you knowledge yeah. uh, 
mm-hmm. and you know information. So I, I feel like Andronicus is captain. I'd say like as much as I'm joking around, Andronicus yeah. is captain, and I, I think okay. you you have a. But a, who, who does Andronicus yeah. hand things over to? When it's he's Chandra. not on, the I, show. I think that's Chandra's because <laughs> because we're not going anywhere, right? I think that's fine. Okay. Yeah, it, like ultimately, the captain, uh, pardon my French, the captain doesn't need to know how to do anything. He just needs to know how to yeah, what to tell people he needs to do to and then know to do it. Yeah, who to tell to do the things. Yeah, so I think Chandra's is, is good for that, um, and it's just a chain of command. If 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 Andronicus isn't there, then we have a, uh, an actual first mate, which is one of us. Then down the line, and then Chandra's is clearly the one after uh, the fifth. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if we probably that, but then we would have like Moxina be like the the deck captain under like like Chandra's be like the yep the bosun yep yeah yeah and then Moxina is like the the helmsman that I think that would work out really yeah, well yeah I got this whole thing set up and he pulls a chart out that explains everything that he's trying to set up <laughs> nice nice um, yeah. So I think that works. All right. Um, I guess another question is, so four of these rooms are going to be spoken for then if, if I'm going to be in the captain's quarters, which is I fine. Mean, you, could make, uh, you, you could make one of these a captain's quarters. Right? That's true, but I feel like want. having the captain's quarters more like centrally located is well, probably... You could, yeah, or you could make that room like the... The, the war like room the meeting the war room yeah okay yeah. that's good yeah let's draw up a, let's draw up a yeah. war room uh, let's we'll break let's break down these there. walls let's break that we don't need these don't care <laughs> um crash is there gonna be, i know the um uh we were having the uh uh Kiladone kind of go back and forth um so there wasn't such a big focus on a forge but is there going to be like a forge or workshop uh, yeah, eventually there will be a, uh, a workshop, and more than likely that will be uh, the lowest deck. Okay. Also, don't forget we host Foundry via the Forge, uh, BTT. <laughs> oh right, right, right. Of course, of course. How can right, I so we've got we've got what five PC rooms, so we've got three open rooms. One of them, which at least one of which I'm assuming is like a guest quarter type thing. Do they we could want to be, yeah. Rooms in particular, to certain NPCs like Chandra's in one and Moxina I mean, in one, since they're like our two next in line, sort of. I mean, uh, well, uh, Echo said that she wanted a, a, a her own quarters. Yeah, that's why we'd have that that sort of like guest room, and it'd be hers. For yeah, now. yeah. All right, that works for me. All um, right. Yeah, you okay. could use you could use the amazing foundry uh, labeling tools to label away. Um, however you want to divvy up your ship. Um, Crash, could I get this mm-hmm. rotated so that the door is on this side? Like, well, you oh, instead that, of your bed being yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, that's well, that's well, weird. Well. Okay, hold on. <laughs> no, no, that's how that's how you like. I mean, that is how we do it back in Noriande. You Noriande's. open the door. You have to <laughs> yeah, over the yeah, bed. Yeah. Well, yeah, you just move yeah. through. You can move through oh, occupied yeah. spaces with yeah. no penalties. Yeah, so, so I guess yeah. It's more for Versi that I was worried about that I felt. Like, oh, yeah, oh, are you guys yeah. bunking up? Yeah. Oh, okay. Wow. It's, Wait, it's, it's a it's a single twin bed. I gotta um, update my. <laughs> I mean, have you have you ever? Well, he could occupy an occupy. We... Oh yeah, that's true. Oh, we ain't squeezing. Made a lot of sense. We oh, ain't sorry. squeezing. Yeah, it's if like you Versi's zoom the in... person and Sibo's the cat. Yeah, <laughs> as you zoom in, you could just see peeking out from underneath the bed is like a little dog bed. And that's where, <laughs> that's, where yeah. that's where Steve sleeps. Yeah. This makes a lot of sense. Start yeah. for regular yeah. ignorance. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Yeah, so just go ahead and either, you know, free freehand it or typing tool, however you want to divvy up the ship, uh, you know, uh, do it do it best for you kind of thing. Be a room. Also, if you are going to be sharing a room with somebody, like uh, you know, I get let me know. I'll drag their mini out to kind of rep that they're sharing a room with you. Uh, 
Now, depending on where the forge was going to be, I think Julian might have just set up shop in there, but if it's going to be in the battle, no. Uh, yeah. And then, and then I'll take the room that I'm in. And then who else hasn't drawn a room yet? Or Oren hasn't. Oh, I thought the one with the, the hammock was Oren. Oh, so sorry, sorry. The one, with the rope, the one with the rope is Oren. Sorry, Julian okay. has not. Then yeah. Julian and yeah, I still definitely. need to do our room. So yeah. I didn't want to do that before, and I knew exactly what was going on. So now yeah. I can do that. No worries. Uh, and I'll take that, that one that my mini's in, I guess. Uh, and then so Julian can be over there by his best bud, Sibo. Yes. I can, be up, I can be here sharing a wall with my, my brother in Ballas. You know, if you just break down the wall between the two rooms, you have so much more room for activity. That's true. That's true. We could bunk our beds. Although maybe it went that, and maybe we should have the guest room where Moxena is, and Moxena where the guest room is, so that the two Medusa can be next to each other. That's too. true. That's true. Yes. Medusa all up in there. I'm probably gonna have to talk to her a lot about Themis going through all these uh, mm. adventures. All right, so for now, Echo is going to be in the guest quarter. Yep. Got it. Well, except that I was just talking about moving him, so I just did. So now the guest is at the bottom. Oh, oh okay. Yoink. There we go. So Moxena and Heliodora then be here. All right. All right. Um, Atronco, so you. Are you sharing your room with anybody, or? Uh, Sibo. Oh, okay. <laughs> yep, for, and, uh, and Elise and Versi are staying in my room. Oh, okay. No, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure he's joking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Oh. So yeah. Sibo is so going to take room. a tunnel in between our <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't ask me how that works with wood. I don't know. Okay. Uh, no, I, but are you shared room or, or no? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. with the least oh, okay. yeah. oh, man. Make it That's pretty it. serious. Okay. So, um... Well, he, he did profess his... Talking about, I'm, talking about, so. I'm talking about piety right now. Um, you have two gods on your ship, but you did give either of them a place to sleep. Well, one of them technically isn't a god right now, either. So. Oh, damn. Damn. All right, um... In that case, um, Julian will run the risk of getting into a really weird spot and, and um, you uh, sleep. If you want, if you want, Julian, uh, Kyra can book with me. If that be kind of yeah, awkward that's you. probably going to be less awkward if you're cool okay. with it. Oren and Pipe. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's the bro room. I mean, is Orin here to say no? I mean, he's not. But you know what? Um, I will take him my uncle. I will take him my uncle. Oh so, wow! Um, okay. Yeah, Julian will take in his uncle. Okay. And I'm assuming Lorius won't care, but I also am assuming Lorius will will want to bunk with me. Uh yeah. I mean, it. It. it you know, that'd be nice. So you got a kind of a crowded room there, all right? Is it gonna be Kyra or or or? Well, um, Pythor Pythor wants to know if you know why you can have Lorius in here, but he can't have Telemachus. <laughs> I am extending you a courtesy, Uncle Pythor. <laughs> no plan. I'm not too keen on Telemachus. 
he has um, he was rather forward with um, with my mother during the Battle of the Hundred Hands. Sounds like um, she was pretty forward with him. I don't know. What was all right. That? So it, it's Telemachus listens from the doorway and he says, "Oh, Julian, my friend, do not worry. Uh, I will be staying with my star student, Orin." Dream. <laughs> Also, it's right across the hallway from your mother. If you go anywhere near her. Oh, have a nice we'll day. <laughs> Orin, my friend. Hey. <laughs> We're going to have to move some of this out of the way to make room for my hammock. Uh, here, we'll throw this rope out the window. Don't there we go. Don't touch my rope. <laughs> All right. That seems like a great living arrangement. Is Will in the chat? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think he'll be pleasantly surprised when he gets back. Mm -hmm. I, I, well, he wasn't here to say no. He wasn't here to be like, no, I'll, I'll take my car. <laughs> okay. Uh, I guess with everyone uh, assigned to rooms and Echo um, Echo's offer accepted uh, do you have any other business left in the city of Mitros? Is there any uh, any last bit of shopping? I don't think so. Okay. Alright. Remember, you have the Keladone and the Keladone shows up every week. And can uh you know, can take care of your goods. Uh let's update on our Discord the calendar real quick. Okay, so let's see. Today is the seventeenth of uh Valian. And weeks are ten days, so Caledone will return uh twenty seventh. Oh, um, question. With, and th this may pertain to us uh, before we set in sail, in, <laughs> in Andronicus's book of How to Train Your Dragon, did it advise how to keep a, a, um, a dragon egg warm? Like, do I need to keep it, like, by heat source, you know, cover it in clay? I think the last like thing, that. I think it was related to whatever the dragon's element was. Yeah, so here's the thing with a copper dragon egg. Um, copper dragons are highly acidic. Um, so you don't want to have prolonged contact with the egg unless you are resistant to or immune to acid because uh, you, you will get chemical burns. So um, as far as like temperature to keep it at, room temperature is actually best. Okay. And yeah. do I need to like... Put, like put it in like a nest that is resistant to acid or acid proof so it doesn't like eat away at anything Bro. that i'm yeah huh, I mean, that, right? yeah that might be a good idea to, to you know kind of give it a little uh acid proof um like cradle essentially yeah and how much we does learned, it we weigh can i like carry it using mage hand okay acid resistant materials include steel Nickel, uh, copper, mm -hmm. uh, and aluminum. Uh, also, uh, certain pure metals. Uh, oh no! So nickel, aluminum, copper, and lead mm -hmm. are all good choices. Lead would probably be bad. Yeah. It would. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just get a, yeah, just get a copper. Yeah, you get a copper bowl made essentially. Yeah. I'll do that. I'll I'll I'll, I'll uh, get a copper bowl made. But, you know, a nice one has, like, feet and things like that. All right. Sounds good. Um, we'll say that... Um, who have you made aware of this egg situation? Have you have you told your mother? Um, Maybe you told it your happened, uncle? It happened all of a sudden, so... I wasn't even thinking about that. Um... Mm -hmm. I wouldn't have told anybody yet, I guess, okay. I, but I wouldn't have, wouldn't deny it or hide it. Mm -hmm. It's just sort of, I've been keep like I've been carrying, I was carrying around the box until I could. Oh wait, it came in a box, didn't it? Like, is the box mm -hmm. acid proof? 
Oh, yeah, the box would have been lined with copper. Yeah. Okay, well, then I, I just keep the box then. Okay. I don't, I don't need to get a special bowl. I forgot about the box. Okay. Yeah. What's in the box? Um, but, like, if anybody asks, like, what's in the box, I, I tell them. Oh, okay. Um, just with everything going on, it wouldn't have been necessarily top of mind this year. Hey, I got a dragon egg. Fair, fair. Uh, yeah, Pythor, um, if he saw you messing with the box, uh, he would definitely want to know, uh, what, do you, what do you got there, nephew? Oh, yes. Um, it, uh, it is a dragon egg. It's a copper dragon egg. What? Let me see. Um, Jeff, you may want to just leave it be. If you touch it, it may give you acid burns. Oh, let me see this. Oh, look, look at this cutie. Oh, look at this cutie. Uh, and he picks up the, uh, the egg, and he kind of cradles it like a little baby. And then he starts throwing it in the air and catching it. <laughs> he says, oh, he's going to fly soon. Oh, I can tell. Oh, what you doing, little baby? Oh, little baby. Uh, and he catches it, and he starts kissing it. And then he cradles it some more. And he says, uh, who gave you this? Um, Auntie Valis did. Um, with the Valis? Guy. Where did yeah. she get an egg like this? Oh, she probably took it from a castus. Yes. With but where does the castus get them from? I'm not entirely sure. Mm. Mm. But, I mean, he must have found a trove at some point, and, uh, because he wanted to sort of fashion his order of Sidon, his... his his, uh, his own version of the Dragon Lords, but uh, Gaius is fucked off, stealing a part of the uh, Antikytheria. And uh, I think that sort of left a void in leadership, and things just aren't the same as they were in the, in the palace. Oh, well, let me see. Uh... Yeah, this is actually a pretty easy one to take care of. You just gotta, you know, you gotta have fun with it sometimes, that's all. I see. You know, like, uh, take it out of the box, take it for walks, uh, maybe let it swim in the ocean for a little bit, uh, you know, make it pretend it can fly, uh, you know, that sort of stuff. I see. Tell it, uh, tell it stories, you know. Uh, is, uh, can I insight him and see, is, is he just bullshitting me, or is, like, uh, is yeah, yeah, you can insight him. And he's a god, so you get extra advantage or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's hard to say. He seems very confident with this information. Like, you don't think that he's maliciously, you know, bullshitting you. Or even, you know, trying to have fun at your expense. Like, he, he seems pretty sincere about it. Whether or not he's accurate is unknown. Sure. I, I, I will continue to say, oh, that's interesting. I'll have to remember that. And then i got to follow up with Andronicus and say... Does it think this makes sense? You're going swimming with the egg, telling it stories? Uh, Andronicus, you uh, do flip through your book, and there that is actually one of the things that they cover in your board book for children. Oh well I, I gave the book to I gave the book to Julian. No, oh, yeah, well, oh, he's, okay. he's got it. yeah, the Julian. Yeah, as you as you look through the book, uh, lo and behold, there is information that um, you you do want to care for the egg, um, and sort of treat it as if you know it uh it's already been hatched. Uh, this is because oh, baby dragons come out of the egg ready for action, and so they're they're constantly learning and growing inside the egg. Hmm. Well. I don't know what to call you besides Egg, because if I give you a name, that might put some undue pressure on you. Cooper. What? What did? Uh, oh, see, what did you say? Cooper. Cooper the copper. Well, I, I don't know how the, the dragon's going to identify. It. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to you know, put an undue burden on it, but uh, I, I suppose I should take you for a walk. And so, um, if if it's less, if it's ten pounds or less, I'll I will, I will manifest a mage hand and I will pick up the egg, and uh, I, I guess go show it to the others that haven't had a chance to see it. 
is the okay. biggest team in the box, but haven't had a chance to see the egg itself. All right. So um, those of you uh, who are kind of preparing uh, to get underway, uh, Julian w uh, kind of shows you all uh, the egg that he has acquired from Queen Vallis. Uh, Andronicus, um, you can confirm as a paladin of the Dragon Lord's Oath, it is, in fact, a dragon egg. Yep, uh, got a little dragon there. I can tell because it's a dragon. Also, Elpis told me so. Nice. Yeah, that, uh, that, that nice. book is coming handy. I told you it was good. You laughed at me. But well, I told did you, I mean, I tell you? It, it's, it's marketing for children. And then, you know, Uncle Pythor said, well, I should, you know, you know treat it like it's flying and tell it stories and take it swimming and things like that. And no, but it was in the book. Elpis well, reads has, that has, book to, to, to my little my little guy every night before bed. Well, Elpis doesn't really read; he just sort of like thought projects. But same same idea. Mm. Um, <laughs> um, oh my God! This happened. Yeah? Did uh did did Phallus tell you wh why she gave you these? Well, it's, uh, she, she found the egg after Dice left. You know, the, the, uh, the Dragon Lords, uh, you know, have, must have got a clutch of eggs and uh, been, you know, creating their own uh, uh, order of Sidon. And with everything that was going on, um, she, she found an egg. And if, if Pythor knew how to take care of it, maybe he's raised the dragon eggs. Well, I'm pretty sure he probably has dragon children somewhere. Sure he's got all sorts of children. He's got a relationship with he uh, Hexia, right? Hmm? Didn't he have a past with Hexia? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, he, he definitely did. There was the, you know, Pythor and mm -hmm. the Seven Sisters or whatever. And, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you'd like to hold it, you're welcome to do so, but it, it, it being a copper dragon, it's a bit uh, acidy. But uh, I'm sure once uh, the little one comes out, I'm sure that won't be as problematic, but maybe just challenging in other ways. Well, Julian, you, I, if I remember correctly, you always wanted to be a, a dragon lord, and yeah, now so you have a, drag, a dragon egg. Not quite sure if I'm ready with responsibility, to be honest. Strange, having to care for something else. Oh, well, it might be. It might be good. Hmm? A lot. Uh, I've been kind of selfish. Just not recently. Always. Well, I mean, with Kyra dying and then coming back, I mean. I, don't want her to be taken advantage of. Oh, that's me. Hey, let yeah. me see. Let me see that thing. Uh, can you touch it, but it may burn you. It, oh, it's copper baby. Uh, and she picks up the egg and just kind of holds it with her arms as straight as possible. And so the egg is far from her as possible while still holding it. <laughs> baby. I wonder if that's how she held, held you when you were... She starts oh, to no, shake the, She starts to shake the egg. Maybe. I might explain a lot of things. I can stop um, that. Uh. that mm -hmm. Don't shake it. I mean, you can do like an F. You can do like a, like a bird. Um, mm. You know, flying. But I, uh, I look it. over to Julian, a new uh, dawning of understanding showing up. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> she, uh, that explains she, a lot. She just sort of like hands the egg back to you like a uh, person who realizes the baby has a poopy diaper. Mm -hmm. Baby. Yes, yes. Mm. Well, well, we'll see what, what they wish to be addressed as when they, they come out, so... Baby. Well, I hope when, when this one we'll hatches see. and Andronicos hatches, they become good friends. Oh, Andronicos has baby? 
Yes, Andronicus has has an egg, and he he said that uh, Andronicus laid it. Uh, n no, um, I don't lay eggs. I've said this before. I know, I know. You I just lay Elise's. Say it again. I, I'm sorry, friend, but I think you may with with the way her mind is. Um, no, he didn't lay it. Um, Elpis, his uh, his. Elpis laid that found. egg. No, 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 no. Elpis found it. Oh, I was gonna say, Elpis, you need to like, cure wounds on that cloaca, because oh my god, that must have been very painful. Again, he found it. It laid. Oh. It. Elpis uh, he blushes he and gifted, actually, hides. But, yeah. Yes. Oh, it was I don't want to see those thoughts. Who gave it to you? I am not at liberty to say. I was asked to oh, keep it quiet. Oh, secret. Okay. All right, Maya, spill it. You got an egg too? Um. Hmm. She like looks at her hair. Ew. I don't think so. Can your snakes lay eggs? I didn't think they had butts. I mean, they don't. So that's that's why I, that's why I was confused. They share butts with Maya. Whoa. That's true. I can't eat stuff through them. You all have the same butthole. We have we have one. Wow, I thought centaurs were messed up. <laughs> that means okay. So real talk. That means Medusas have intestines running through their heads. Like what the fuck? Maybe they're just self-sustained. You ever thought of that? Like, like hair. Like, well, like the leaves on a tree absorb nutrients and then share it with the actual tree. Maybe the snakes, what, when they eat, they just like digest directly I mean, into your... Venus flytraps don't have, don't have bubbles, right? Yeah, so yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe it's more like that. Yeah, it's like a plant. You have like a plant. That makes more sense than you having yeah, a bunch of intestines does. running through your head. Does it? Yeah, that's just brain damage waiting to happen. Yeah, yeah. But what if her brain's located somewhere else in her body? Because she has to have all these intestines in her head. Well, I, I, I'm not 100% sure. We could ask uh, Moxena. I am not going to ask her that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Elpa, say that Kira asks Moxena to. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Yeah, that's all a good one right. uh, Pretty good, pretty good. They, uh, right. they, they, they divvied out uh, roommates while you were gone. So. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're with you're with all the We're gonna have to get another. We're gonna have to get another hammock. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Telemachus said as he was throwing your rope out the window. Yeah, he was, uh, he, was, he, was he was making room for his. Uh, yeah. No, his would go with the boxes or the crates. He I'll elbows. He elbows you conspiratorially at the ribs though, and he says, "Don't not worry. My girlfriend is right across the hall." I would probably oh. be out many nights. Uh, well, whatever you need to do, yeah. You, well, you got it. If you see a smock hanging from the door, don't come a knocking. <laughs> Am I correct in assuming the Kyra and Myra, Myra across the hall? Um, yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah, or I'll just kind of nod, uh, and then sideways. Slide out of the room. <laughs> hmm. Oh, also, um, your teammates are showing off their Pokemons. I mean, their um, their dragon eggs. Oh, nice. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, and they decided who was the captain. Officially, it's going to be Adronicos. When Adronicos is not available to the captain, responsibilities will fall to uh, Chandra's. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Does Chandra have, have a first mate yet? Does Chandra have a sailing experience? He has administrative experience and knowledge of all knowledge skills. Oh, that's good enough for me, yeah. Yeah. Except for the new oh, ones introduced at A5E, but he probably has those too. Oh, he's got engineering. Oh, for sure. I mean, if he has history, he has that. He has base 5E history, then he has both of those. Mm -hmm. guess. Mm -hmm. Who is this lady down here in the guest? Oh, that's, that's just guest. some crazy nymph that they found in the marketplace. Okay, right on. All right. She wants so, to yeah, start a war. She, 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 yeah, yeah, she gave us a of... she gave us a quest to go to Aregia and find uh, uh, Narcissus because she believes that he's he was stolen from her. Well, that, and that's the story that most people. Mm, Aregia. Yep. Yeah. She wants us mm -hmm. to sell into the sell into Aregia and perform a 
make a distraction and call and and uh, meet the queen so that uh um so that she can find out where they're keeping narcissus narcissus we, we getting paid for this or just uh, yes how much uh she said she said uh, mm -hmm. uh fortune and then a king and then a king's fortune He's after like, we succeed are we talking like a burger king fortune or i'm not uh, sure she no she, numbers she, she, were said out loud but you know like right. she's, well, she seemed I... very confident that she could pay you a lot of money and see see but, but when, we, is, when we this is after we go to scorpion island so yes after we go to scorpion island i trust your judgment sounds good <laughs> Yeah, sorry, I'm Sibu did say that uh, yeah. she's uh, very wealthy, apparently. Oh, yeah? He could incite her wealth? Well, no, history. like, she has a reputation. She's like a thousand plus years old. Damn. All right, and, yeah, if, yeah, not, and, if you're not filthy rich after a thousand yeah, years. Yeah, and even though she's a nymph, she lives in the city of Mitros, so she understands, like, she's... commerce and, you know, capitalism and all yeah, that. I don't know how you guys don't know her. According to Sibo, she's the one who who's... Uh, influenced all the wars uh with Regia. oh right on great Ornal uh loves that <laughs> entire life's a sham good to know <laughs> i'll be in my my bunk with the telemachus you know did you at least draw straws or how to we uh he you know we were just picking picking roommates and he showed up and was looking for a roommate and we all said no except you hey you really did me dirty, Julian. <laughs> so that, fair, everyone I, else already had one. I, I, I have it, two roommates. I have Lorius and my uncle. Okay, and fair enough. Both just make <laughs> untenable. Uh, yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Plus, I might All just right. let him into sleep. What? So are we on are we currently on course for a Scorpion Island then? What is it, a four day heading or something like that? Yeah, I have low key made everybody set sail because I I was worried we'd just be a Mitros till Christmas. <laughs> oh, it's been one of those That's episodes, bad. all right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um you are currently underway. Thank you for asking. Um so let me see what cool thing happens to you while you are sailing. <laughs> oh, we should also put on some some uh exciting sailing music the kind of sailing music a young elf uh rogue thief uh scout would uh, listen to let's see who who's holding the antikytherian sibo is okay all right let's see sailing 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 i really just got it delete this section sailing ah there we go sailing stuff la 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 ooh okay uh well that's a fortuitous uh thing to find first first off um okay so while you are sailing um you estimate that inner seas Ooh, it is going to take four days to reach Scorpion Island. Um, however, you could uh, make an offering to Sidon and reduce the travel time by one day. Captain? Oh, I didn't think so. Okay. Captain? Telemachus. <laughs> Hi, Captain. Yeah, up to the captain, I guess. Right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume no on that one. All right. Let's keep going. Um, so on the, uh, let's see, I need a D4, here we go. All right. Um, only one day in, uh, to sailing, as the sun is getting ready to set, um, your lookout spots something shiny off in the, uh, distance. What is it, Telemachus? Do you go to investigate? Uh, he says, uh, oh, small captain, uh, off the E. <laughs> boat side that is that's this one uh there's something shiny in the water how far out um i wouldn't take you too far of course to go and investigate captain <laughs> it, it, adronicos, adronicos. it wouldn't take us too far yes. off <laughs> yes sorry so should we just call you captain andy moving forward or and everything you've learned about being a captain i can tell you have learned from captain bubbles jr yeah i don't know just sail away just sail somewhere guys jeez <laughs> <laughs> oh my god 
don't know. <laughs> All right. Um, you find uh somehow still afloat a uh, a chest. It is waterlogged and listing. Um, but you are able, perhaps, to get it out of the water. Um. Uh, pull pull up alongside it. I'll just hop in and tie a tie a rope around it. All right. All right. I, I John Smith my way into the water, uh, and then tie the rope around the chest and just hold on to a handle. All right. As a as a triton, you realize that this is a risky move because often this sort of stuff is used as bait um, to sort of catch uh, the greedy and the unaware. Um, go ahead and give me a D twelve roll. Guide it Don't before you jump in. Don't be mimic. You can't guide the D twelve. Oh, 12. <laughs> floating, floating barrel mimic. That'd be yeah. amazing. <laughs> Aww. Okay. All right. Um, you get the boat up onto the uh, onto the deck, and or sorry, not the boat. So you get the chest up onto the deck, and as you do, it is just sort of falling apart at this point. It's so badly waterlogged. Um, coins begin to spill out of it. Uh, before uh, anybody does anything, I want to ritual cast detect magic. Okay, uh, your heart is uh, relieved, but also sad, for there is no magic in this chest. Oh, well, that's definitely what I was hoping for. <laughs> okay, um, kind of breaking it apart and seeing what is inside. There were some fine clothes that have since been just root by exposure to the ocean yeah. and, and whatnot. Uh, even the mending spell combined with prestidigitation could not get back the uh, the quality that was lost. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, there are a couple of crabs in there. They thank you for saving them uh, and then jump overboard, unless you want to eat them, uh, in which case yes. you can capture them. I'll take those. Oh, okay, never mind. They thank you for saving them, Adronikos, and they, they are scooped up in a net. I, I uh, start throwing some back, and then Sibo uh, beats me to some of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Uh, they cry out, <laughs> Master, please! Master of the seas! Great Triton! I still no! can't understand them. They can just understand me. <laughs> I have to say... The warlock in the other campaign took talk with animals permanently and refuses to get rid of it, so it is very much Divinity Original <laughs> Sin. Yes. Every fucking animal in the game has fucking dialogue, side quest, backstory. It's it's amazing. Um, all right. Uh, inside, alas, uh, you find that there is a smattering of foreign coinage that could be converted to fifty-four drachmae. So. Is this a is this a foreign currency we recognize, or is this like an extra planar? Extra this is planar. definitely an extra planar currency. Uh, does Sibo recognize it? Um, ooh, um, there are many worlds. Uh, let me see if it is your world. We uh, we jokingly said something had a one in a thousand chance of happening Friday night, and then we rolled a two on a D thousand. Jeez. So we pretended we rolled a one because it was pretty cool. Um. You do not recognize this as Dorian Day currency. Ah. Yep. All right, but um, you, with your knowledge skills, you are confident that, yeah, this could be converted to roughly 54 drachma. So okay. not a great find uh, by any stretch of the imagination, but it was uh, randomly generated, so. All right. Good choice, uh, Captain. Most most of the coins look like uh, this, actually. They are all weird, I want to say, octagons. Okay. No. Hexagons. Are they hexagons? No, they're oh, octagons. They're... I can't tell from the angle. Yeah, oh, okay. if you put a hole in those, you could like uh, use them. No, to they're eight-sided. Yeah, yeah eight-sided yeah, octagon. Octagon. Yeah. All right. Um, the rest of the trip goes pretty, um, pretty smoothly, and off in the distance, you will start to see Scorpion Island. Let me go ahead and change out the wider world for you so that it has information. Oh yeah. Yeah. I may have to refresh my foundry. It's moving so slow. Uh, let's see. All right. Chandra's Falana. Let's have a history enough. 
Uh, Chandra says, um, do you, you don't just want to work together, or do you want to make this some kind of competition? No, no let's uh, just, just work together. I just tried to sound cool. I'm sorry. No, I mean, uh, competition can certainly, um, you know, inspire people to... Uh, the spice of life, as they say. Anyways, here's, here's the map. Um, <laughs> who wants to do the, uh, the star chart? I really hate, I really hate the constellation stories. They're terrible, so. And, uh, Falana says, um, I mean, I, I could do the, I could do the stories for the, um, the stars. I'm not, I'm not embarrassed. I mean, they don't, they don't really have a lot of historical accuracy, but they are fun, so. No, after you, by all means. I'd like to, to hear. Okay. Uh, all right, so let's plan. Get this guy out. Ba blam and let's see we need mm -hmm. all right uh switching this okay so so star chart time Okay. Oof, the star charts. Okay. Uh, go to here, and... I like the star charts. I think they're fun. But, I don't know. You guys will make your own uh, um, opinions of them, I guess. So, let's see. That's number seven. Here we go. Okay. Um, so, Falana, uh, as everybody's gathered on the sort of the deck of the ship um she points to the stars and she says um there do you see do you see up in the sky the series of stars that looks like a centaur that one right there mm -hmm. this is the constellation of the centaur this um the story behind this is such these groups of stars are sometimes called the centaur and the scorpion after a very old tale. And she says, if you follow the stars, you can see that they lead into the scorpion. And then there's this brilliant star right here that is the stinger of the scorpion. A centaur came across a scorpion stuck in a puddle of mud. The scorpion begged for, health, or for help, but the centaur was afraid of getting stung. And so he trotted away and left her to die. A gust of wind blew a branch into the puddle and the scorpion was able to scramble along it and escape. She then followed the centaur's hoof prints, seeking revenge on the selfish beast that had refused to help her. She found the centaur sleeping in a shady glen and stung him in the throat. As the lethal venom coursed through his veins, the centaur thrashed about until one of his hooves landed on the scorpion, crushing her. If you hadn't sought revenge, We'd both be alive, the centaur lamented with his dying breath. And if you had helped me, I wouldn't have sought revenge, the scorpion replied. And she just sort of stares at everybody. Like, that's the story. Huh. Tale as old as time. Yep. Feels like a Noriande tale. We do one with the, um, we do one with the rattlesnake and a rabbit, um, ah. and there's a river, and it's a, it's a whole deal. But Chandra says, uh, "Well, we don't have time for <laughs> any more uh, stories, so let's talk about the facts then." <laughs> um, this this story is actually in some way relevant to what's happening here on this island. So, Scorpion Island, um, it, it 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 has its name. Uh, because there are a lot of scorpions on the island. Uh, but those scorpions uh, used to be centaurs uh, because long ago, um, long before the first centaurs ever set foot on this island, there was a race of ancient beings who dwelled on this island, and they studied the most powerful of magics. 
and they scried into worlds beyond these and further still. The island was once a lush forest, and these ancient beings recorded their findings on the trees themselves, carving into the trunks of each and every tree incredible stories and secrets of eldritch magic and magics long since lost uh, through time. Now there was a being known as the Lotus Witch and she sought these ancient secrets. She journeyed to the island but when she arrived she found that the forest was gone. She asked the locals what had happened to the forest and the centaurs who had come to stay in this land uh, boldly told her uh, those trees were in the way and we cut them all down. We stole them as lumber and to people who wanted to build ships. We use them to build ourselves uh, uh, mighty uh, structures that we would no longer need to be nomads. As she listened in horror, her ire grew. Her rage was tremendous. And she cursed the centaurs to teach them about being so prideful and so foolish and so ignorant. She made it that they must allow a rider to, and he kind of looks over at Folon, and you could tell he's like debating if he should say this part or not. And then he says, uh, uh, perhaps Folon should, should explain. Uh, and Folon looks, uh, looks around and he says, um, he looks, he looks a little, a little like nervous and embarrassed, but he's also, you know, performed gladiator feats in front of thousands of people, um, so on and so forth. So he says, according to the stories, my people were cursed by the Lotus, Witch that we must always have a bound rider. One who we have given full trust and love to, and we would allow to ride us as if we were their common mount. It is considered by most centaurs to be the most shameful experience that you could ever have. Degraded to that of a beast of burden. But my people have come to find joy in it. But it does cast us as outsiders, among other centaurs, for our lifestyle is considered shameful and disgusting. But if any of us reaches the age of maturity and has not bound to a rider, then we succumb to the ancient curse, become a mindless scorpion filled only with hatred. If, for whatever reason, our bonded rider is killed or dies before we do, we have a very small amount of time to find a new one before the curse takes us, as you learned firsthand when you helped me. And he looks over at Typhon. Typhon gives him a, a bro nod. The other, the other resident of, of the Scorpion Isles, the one that went full scorpion, I guess, for lack of a better term, during the games. What what happened to him? Why did why did that happen? Uh, for... There's a guy that, like, he, like, chest burstered, I'm a scorpion now, right? Mm. Full-on uh, says, I do not want to put the business of the damned and the dead out before all of you, but Priam, he and his rider parted ways 
shortly after arriving in Mitros. And he refused to find a new rider. I think it was the mainland centaurs and their judgments, their cruel words. I think he, I think he wanted to die on his own terms and not live under the burden of an ancient curse. Suppose I can respect that. Well, <clears throat> if you have more, Chandras, I, I don't mean to interrupt. Uh, and Chandra says, uh, well, <clears throat> it turns out that uh, Sivo here was able to discover some other interesting information. Um, the Eurasians uh, apparently use Scorpion Island as a secret training ground for their young monks. So there's a good chance that we will run into some while we are on the island. Um, apparently training against the scorpions is part of what gives them the speed and dexterity that they are known for. And they mimic the fighting styles of the scorpions as the basis for their martial arts styles. Uh, further, there is a small settlement of sirens located along the coastline, though they generally keep to themselves. Beyond that, the island is mostly desert, with the forest long since uh, eradicated, the uh, earth just sort of gave way to arid climes and biting winds. Um, the Lotus Witch said to live in a great tower at the very center of the island, though finding your way there can be a troublesome process. I guess I am curious, champions. Why do you seek the island? What do you hope to discover? What do you hope to gain? Yeah, we're kind of looks over to Sibo. Yeah, my, um, it's pretty selfish. My, uh, my understanding is my father's here. And I'm looking to find and or rescue him, if that's at all possible. We also mean to gauge the dispositions of the local denizens and see how receptive they might be to an alliance. Hmm? Bolon says, um, one thing you need to know about the people who live on this island. They pay no gods tribute, neither the five, nor the twins, nor even the lesser gods. They simply exist. We can work with that. <laughs> but, um, Sibo. Uh, you see Folon get a uh, big smile on his face. You are a halfling. I'm, not, I'm tall for a halfling, but yes, I'm a, I'm a halfling. He, uh, he kind of blushes a little bit, and he kind of looks like looks away from you, not making eye contact. Uh, how close is Versi to you, do you think, at this point? Um... You think she's kind of like staring off the the prow kind of thing, like taking in the ocean vibes, or yes, or, or would she be near you, listening in to the mission that's coming up? No, I, I think that no, I would say that she's probably not listening in. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, okay. No. All right. He kind of like approaches you and says, "So, uh, you were not married back in Nariande, are you?" No, I am not. I see. I see. You don't really have anyone special in your life, right? 
Um, not in that way, no. Oh, excellent. All right, great. <laughs> That's good. Uh, he leads down with his creepy human torso part, and he slaps you on the back with his, one of his human hands. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so Chandra says, uh, well, let's go ahead and uh, find a suitable place to make landfall. It seems um, the map maker would like us to park the boat right here. So Apparently it's an easy walk from the <laughs> beach to this uh, tower here. I, I doubt that's actually the case. And you realize that Chowder says feels about map makers. He has feels, um, and they're not—they're not necessarily positive. They're not necessarily positive. Sibo puts away his cartographer's kit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there um, a port on this island, or are we going no. to anchor and? Um, Fallon says um, when we when we would do trade with uh, outsiders, we would always meet them on the uh, the beach of the inner bay. That is also where the Eregians arrive. Um, Sibo, mm. your information is correct. The Eregians do train here. Yes. We, at first, considered it a bit of um, an affront that they would come and essentially uh, antagonize and hunt our own people who had submitted to their curse, but they often kill the centaurs who have turned into scorpions, and I feel that that is a mercy. So my people allow them to access the island and we have a tentative peace. And sometimes centaurs from our tribe will leave and journey to Eresia, having bonded with an Eresian monk, and then they will train uh, alongside the Eresians. There's actually quite a few uh, centaur, centaur, monk. centaur monks living Ooh. in Eresia. It's a lot of attacks. Yeah. And then uh, Falana says, well, you have to understand, Aresia is not a race. It is a culture. And much as the Amazons are, uh, all manner of creatures and species live in Aresia, but they're all united under the Aresian culture. You can call it that. Hmm. <laughs> uh, Charter says, um, yes, well, you will need to make a decision about your B team. <laughs> So you forgot the the crew select team. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, like the, the roster, selection yeah. menu comes up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like the waffle house menu. All right. Yeah, yeah. But we got a. I think we had a two or three picked out already. Let's see. I think we. I think maybe we've got most and or all of them selected. There right. is five selected at this point. All right, works for me. Who do we? Who do we get? Telemachus. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, it is, his ability is pretty good. It, it, it's, cost is it's so good. It's pretty it ideal like, for me. Seems like it'd be a good uh, squad lead. Yeah, so we've got trained in everything intelligence with expertise if you already have it. We've got Orin gets pack tactic. Oh, nice. Uh, we've got like Bardic Inspiration eight times per short rest. For a D8, and then we've got Telmachus like extra succeeded a cost, and then Corinna's passive proficiency in survival and harvesting. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Like yeah. all those are just fucking fantastic. Yeah, and then like even with with Corinna, you also get three times for short rest as a bonus action advantage on your next range attack. Yeah. I think does that include ranged spell attacks, or is that just range? It's just attacks? all ranged attacks. Okay, so yeah, like that's super good too. Yeah. All right, so read them off to me so I can group them up one more time. Who we got? Uh, Chandras and Xandrox, uh, Xandrox, Corinna, Atticus, uh, Kira, and Telemachus. Okay. You make like an equipment thing for B team. Uh, yeah, we want to we want to do their special pre order outfits. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Let's see. Uh, who was the last one? Falana. Uh, 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 Chandra's uh, No, Atticus. Atticus. Okay. Oh yeah. That is a should we have should, team. should we have some like we're about to meet meet like a a group of 
You're not taking Folon to his own island to see his own family? Oh no. I mean, does he have to be on B team to come with us? Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, All that's right. Good What's Folon's ability? Enough. Bonus action or oh, reaction? Just like fucking charge one, like to knock people over. Oh no! Disengage and move up. That could be good. Once per long rest. Yeah. I mean. Okay, hmm. so you can do that as a reaction. Would that happen before you take damage or after? Hmm. Um, I guess it would be before. Oh, that's pretty good. Then. Yeah, that's pretty good. Now you think swap Telemachus? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Telemachus can spend all the time he wants. Honestly, I do feel like on, Telemachus on, is only on the only Yeah, yeah I, I'm the only one that would enjoy. I'm fine with it. It doesn't bother me at all. Um, if we don't expect a lot of confrontation, then we can don't need to bring Eticus. What is Telemachus. this? Witch light? I mean, like, there's cursed it's, scorpions it's, just like yeah. wandering around the island. I feel going. Like, Diplomacy. Uh, <laughs> we could recruit those I, I, scorpions. I just, I <laughs> Not to mention there is the Aten Scorpion, which does have a spa. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Spa, okay. I wonder if we can hex some regions to the train. To pick up full on. All right, sounds good. So we got Chandra, Zamorox, Corinna, Eticus, Kyra, and Volan. I was just hoping to say I would like to succeed at a Telemachost. Oh, no, very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Oh wow. my goodness, oh my goodness. Wow, yeah, take your Oof. inspiration for that one, for right. sure. Mm -hmm. Alright, so, Eticus is swapping out? Is that what you're saying? Uh, Telemachus out. No, Telemachus oh, is swapping out. For oh, dang, long okay. Time. I'm just sad I can't say it. Like, sorry, Telemachus, we're bringing the hyena. You can just wait in the room, you know, you get to get your cot set up. Alright. Uh, he, uh, he blows kisses at, uh, Kyra, and she, uh, catches them, uh, and then pretends to eat them, like, a uh, Cookie Monster. <laughs> so hot. You too are, uh, you're really something. <laughs> this is, this is a thing now, I guess. So, when no, we're putting, not even listen. and we're putting Mox on on charge. Okay, so Moxette is like third, third, uh, third captain essentially. Yeah, uh, so it's, down it's, the line. Okay, it's me, seven. Chandra's, and then Moxena. I mean, right. I mean, and seven. then Telemachus. She says, uh, she says, don't worry, the ship will still be here when you get back, as long as you have Maya with you. I trust hmm. you. All right, so out of character. <laughs> what happens if we go somewhere and Maya fucking dies? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, I guess you better. Bad. I oh, guess you get, better get ready for a big ass fight. <laughs> yeah. get ready for a big ass fight. What was it? You were inside it, No, I didn't mean to oh. click it. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say. No, no, I, no, I was. Uh, yeah. I mean, Zemo, she's serious. If you okay. don't come back with Maya, she will take your ship. Goop. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Ride or die. I admire right. that. All right, let's yeah. go. Okay. All right. Let's All do right. it. Let's see. Hmm. Oh, I need to go to my uh, history. Let's see. Um, where the hell is that at? Library? No, oh, wait. Hmm. I can't remember how to get to my YouTube history. My brain. Oh, there it is. Okay. They just keep changing everything all the time. Just leave things alone. What is my dislike button? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did they take away dislike? No, they still got dislike. No, don't scare me, man. All right. Mm -mm. All right. So you guys are going to roll up on uh, this here beach. Let's see. Mm -mm. Scorpion Island. Island Beach. There we go. All right. You take your two jolly boats. You head to shore. As you head to shore, you see that there are three uh, youths. They are uh, beating the shit out of each other on the beach. Nice. They seem to be doing some kind of funky martial arts. There's a lot of yeah, 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 and then this one's like spinning. 
kick. I'm like, uh, we row yeah, back yeah. to our boat and equip our regions in in our <laughs> PT. <laughs> 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 All right. Yeah. Um, seeing you approach, they all go into combat stances. Let's do it then. All right. What? This one calls, well, this one calls out to you. Hold! Who are you? Why are you here? This is a sacred training ground. Secret only to the Eregians. Uh, I gesture towards Spolon. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. I'll roll a fame check for Spolon. Give them the nope. secret sign. Okay. Uh, this girl. Oh, more or less famous than us. I don't want to hurt your feelings. Oh, uh, anyways. More. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. I, uh, Ionis, uh, looks over. Um, or Ionis, I, Ionis, uh, looks over and says, uh, Folon. I did not re I did not recognize you at first. I'm so sorry, but you've returned so soon. Uh, and Folon says, uh, y yes, the great games have concluded and I have returned home. I have brought with me the heroes of prophecy. Perhaps you've heard of them. And <laughs> the, kids, the kids all roll fame checks on you. Mm -hmm. I give them guidance. <laughs> when you have to roll low yeah that's that's terrible okay, oh, okay, guys. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah they go who heroes of what Hero heroes of profanity that's what? uh and Sometimes, then Julian, yeah. perhaps. uh this kid says um Folon, did did we win did the Orisians sweep the games and Folon kind of smiles and says, um, they had a very good showing, and uh, I'm sure are returning home eager to train harder than ever. <laughs> okay, the kids look satisfied with this. And Iona says, um, ah, well then, um, what do you, do you need anything from us, Folon? And Folon's allies? Well, Sivo, now's your time to shine. We're, we're going straight into the for, to, for my thing. We don't. The, oh. I mean, hey. we can. I mean, we can start there. You don't have to, though. If you do what you're comfortable with. Volon looks at all of you and says, "Um." Do you feel that the Eurasians could be of some assistance to us, or...? I, I, I'm not sure that they would... I mean, they're just your training, right? Have you seen a halfling on the island? Uh, the kids say, um... Ah, oh, a halfling. Hmm. Oof. We have only been training here for uh, two months. That's what I thought. Would they have been here in the last two months? They've been here for many years, I believe. Years. Uh, Folon says, You're saying your father has been here for many years? He's been in Thylea for many years. I don't know how long he's been on the island. Uh, Folon says, uh, You must forgive me, but I, my sister claims to have met a halfling once. Um, but I was away um, participating in gladiatorial matches and. Sports competitions. I, I don't, I don't recall ever seeing a halfling on this island, uh -huh. unless it was an Eurasian monk. Is your father an Eurasian monk? He wasn't when he left. It, since it's a culture, then he could be, but I doubt it. What does he look like? Um, I get a little bit shorter and just point at my face. So just like so you, but shorter. Short. <laughs> yeah, maybe some more wrinkles. Uh, I haven't seen him for like 20 years, so... Hey, bunch right. your face together. I want to get a good yeah. mental image. To, that I uh, pressed it to take grayness in my hair and shit. Okay. okay. I really know what we're looking for. Yeah. I think uh, perhaps we should talk to Folon's sister then. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Folon, do you know where your sister is? Uh, yeah, I can take you to... Um, I can take you to them. 
All right. Brave warriors of Eurasia, um, thank you for your offer, but uh, for now, we will just go meet with my tribe. Continue your training. You make your homeland proud. And uh, he bows to them, and they bow to him, and then they go back to training. What was the uh, what was the placement of Eurasia? It was like fifth or sixth overall. <laughs> yeah, what a, a, what a whisper, great. whatever it was, a Condor's breath as they go by. Oh damn! Uh, you see like the cough, you know? yeah, you see the the leader stop. Oof. She stiffens like a statue, but makes no other makes no reply. Well, they didn't do badly though, right? It's a region. Uh, if they're not first, well, they're last. Ricky yeah. Bobby rules. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you get no emotional reaction out of them except for that, and then they return to their training. Does their intensity increase? Oh yeah, ten times more intense. They actually start hurting each other. <laughs> All right. Um, so you travel for many hours. Um, before, uh, oh, I should probably advance the calendar because it was four days of journey. Boop. Okay. And then time, several hours. So there we go. All right. You guys happen upon, uh, the centaur's camp. Let me get you over here. So the terrain of the islands kind of windswept plains, and then the towards the center around the tower is kind of wood desert. Oh, okay, dang. Mm -hmm. Yep. The desert is definitely like the center of the island, and what few trees that have regrown are here and there, but mostly it's just like wide open, like hill lands and plains, and you know, nice, nice for like you know being a centaur and like wanting to run around and not crash into trees and stuff. But, yeah, does it look like the pretty much the only like permanent structure is the tower on the island? Yeah. Dang. Because okay. their their ancestors uh, thought that the houses they built was part of why they got cursed. Like if they hadn't if they hadn't tried to build houses, they wouldn't have cut down all the trees. If they hadn't if they hadn't engaged in like commerce and you know like ex import exporting, they wouldn't have you know cut down all the trees for lumber. So they blame like a lot of the bad things that happened to them on trying out civilization, essentially. That's rough. Yeah. All right. Not on the not on the Lotus Witch. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you you can find out more. Uh, mm -hmm. All right. So you arrive at the camp, and as you do, um, all of the centaurs stop what they're doing. And they look over, and they all uh, shout out, uh, There he is! There is Folon! Yes, Folon! Um, and all of them kind of rabble-rouse and get very, very excited. They are clanging on um, their spears they, and bows together. They are stomping their feet. The shamans are using druid craft uh, to, to do druid craft stuff. I don't know. Um... <laughs> You know how it do. So, um, real quick, this guy right here. Yeah. That's not actually the same guy as before, is it? No, no, no. This is just okay. uh, what okay. I use for... I uh, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I just use it for centaur boss guys. So, eventually... Wait, I did not want to have to explain that shit. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Oh, jeez. Yeah. yeah, eventually, I, eventually, eventually I get tired of making fresh tokens. <laughs> So sometimes, sometimes we give repeats. Sometimes we give repeats. No, that's fair. I just really that would be, uh, that would be, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're, we're putting that conversation out for for a minute, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I understand your trepidation there, <laughs> um, for sure. So, um, all right. So let's see. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, this guy, um, you know, runs forward. <laughs> And he says, uh, oh, 
Oh, my boy, you've returned to us. And with medals? And Folon uh, kind of opens his side satchel, pulls out the medals, and uh, Le- Leon, his father, is like, Ooh, these are nice. So uh, you didn't win the Battle of a Hundred Hands then? And um, Folon says, uh, No, I uh, tried my best, but uh, the champion of the Hundred Hands is this individual right here. And he motions to him. <laughs> Greetings, I am uh, Julian Mitros, and these are my companions. We are the heroes of prophecy. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. Mm. A pleasure to meet you as well. My name is Leon, and over there is Rock, my life partner and rider. And, uh, nice. yeah. Rock waves at you. Solid. Yep, yeah, that, that checks out. I wave back. So, uh, Folon, what brings you here? Ah, you're trying to help your sister. Excellent. She does not have much time left. And Folon looks a little shifty and says, um, well, Father, that was not my intention, but uh, it could possibly solve a number of problems. I had, I had hoped that perhaps she would have solved this problem on her own. And then he says, well, she's an odd one. Not many can... Well, I'm sure she will find the right person in time. And he gives a weak smile. Oh. And Folon says, uh, Ah, well, let us talk about other things. Um, Wait, is Andronicus hearing talk of another Pokemon? Is that what's happening right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Um, at least they might have checked. Just saying. Mm. That's fair. Kyra slides over and says, "We know what they say. What happens on the B team stays on the B team." Hey yo. <laughs> I don't know if they say that, but I'm saying it. And I'm on the B team, and she high fives Edicus. Yeah, Edicus <laughs>, laughs nervously. <laughs> <laughs> and Folon says, "Ah, uh, Father. Um, we do need to speak with uh, Nessa because um, my friend Sibo here." He's, um, he's looking for his father. Uh, Sibo, help me out here. What, y- your father's name is also Joy- Sibo? Joyous. Joyous? Okay. Joyous. I, in my notes, I had, I had Placebo. Uh, yeah, he's... Placebo? Yeah, yeah. Oh, pla- yeah. Pla- placebo, yeah. Joyous. Okay. Joyous. Placebo? Got it. Sounds like, Julian, sounds like we've got several... The, 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 uh, the inventor of the placebo effect. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Correct. I thought oh, it was yeah. Daddy-O. <laughs> so, <laughs> converging plots well, that's here. That's his uncle created daddy When he sees you, he says, uh, "Oh, joyous! Eh, you have returned." <gasps> no, uh, no, no. I'm I'm Steve, but Joyous is my father. Do you know him? Folon says, "No, no, no. Yes, father. This is his son, Sibo." And then mm. Leon looks a little disappointed. Oh. Oh, I thought you would come back. You were s- sorry. I thought your father had come back. He was um, he was obsessed with meeting with the Lotus Witch. Ew. He okay. went to her tower, and we had never seen him again. He's, he's quite quite crafty. That one. He may may have uh, found a way to to stay in the tower. He has a hunger for knowledge, mm. and when he found out that she knows all things he had to see her well now I have to see her because you told me she knows all things it is true she is great greater than the gods um that we should do that then um to the lotus witch but the way <clears> there perhaps is... not immediately oh. but we will definitely uh, see about that, Sibo. We we have we have dedicated ourselves to finding your father. Leon you... says, um, y- oh, "You don't yeah. intend to take my take my son with you, do you? It's bad enough my daughter is always wandering the deserts to visit the the Lotus Witch, but most who go to see the Lotus Witch never return. Uh, I think... And those who do come back changed." Like, um, 
that? She is a being who controls time itself. Some return young, some return wizened and old, and some return unaware of who they were, convinced of their new identity. Okay. And some return in bodies, not their own. Mm. Mm. Sounds like this witch might be running some sort of experimentation out of her tower. He kind of gets like uncomfortable and he says, uh, her business is her own. Mm. We'll keep that in mind. You said earlier that you placed the witch above the gods. Would you say even above Sidon then? Oh, of course. Sidon is a fool. He is uh, a child who plays at being a man. Here, here. In that, we are in agreement. He is rather petulant. So, we've heard your tribe holds itself bold into to no gods, then. Do you, is there, or none that we know of, do you have a deity, or is there, what sort of higher calling do you follow if there is one? Um, we simply exist. The Lotus Witch dissuades the worship of any deities on this island, and her powers keep us safe from retribution from the gods. Shit, talk about B-team member. Right? <laughs> you have no storms that find your, find your island, then? Hmm, they do, but they're always... Hmm. Well, they are never intense. They are always bountiful. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Warren will turn to the others. Uh, if the Lotus Witch truly has such power like this, then I think we do need to contend with her. In addition to finding the whereabouts of Joyous... Well, if the Lotus Witch um, was the one to put the curse on them so long ago, um, is it somebody we would want to... Uh... I feel like we, when we meet her, we should definitely be on our guard. Seems like another Demetria adjacent of individual, to be sure. Yeah. If she's able to protect them from Sidon. Or maybe she has an agreement. He did say the storms were bountiful. What's uh, what does ire from Lutheria look like in terms of smiting? Is it outward, or is it just like when you die, you can't get revived easily, like out of character wise? I mean, she's very petty. So, like, if, for example, if you guys were on her bad side, and one of you died, or your allies died, she would probably step in and prevent, like any sort of, you know, raised dead or resurrection effect. So. And I'm maybe not... even maybe even keep your fancy diamonds. Yeah, yeah. Or it would just be kind of wondering, because obviously they have, if they're not worshipping Sidon there in an island in the middle of the middle of the sea, it seems to lend credence to the fact that they probably do have some sort of protection. Yeah. It'd be hard to kind of gauge exactly if they have protection from Lutheria or not, based on, I don't know if they have, well, would, sort of yeah. magic like that, I guess. Would that have been anything well, that... Well, if you think about it... Yeah, go ahead. Um, they're... From what we understand, their their curse happens when they uh, don't have a rider, or when they die? Uh, Are yeah, they... True, true. Uh, maybe... Folon says, uh, uh... What happened with... What happened during the Great Games... I fear that he was already starting to transform before his, his untimely demise. Oh. Well, and do your people have the capability of bringing people back from the dead, even if they've only been gone for roughly a minute or so? Uh, hold on a sec. Um, I'm going to say 
throughout the history of their tribes, maybe like one or two shamans rose to a strength where they could have cast like um, reincarnation, but they wouldn't have oh. really thought to do it because like a lot of cultures don't think reincarnation is like a good good thing to do. You know what I'm saying? Because like you're kind of giving up your identity, uh, yeah. basically, to cheat well, death. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, what would be interesting if they reincarnated something other than a centaur? Would they still need a rider? Like, imagine if they came back as, like, a gnome. Like a, or, what if yeah, they came back be, as a horse? That would be awkward. Hmm, okay. So, I think... But historically, there's no mention of Luthiria's involvement at all in what the curse that befell these people. It is oh. strictly between the centaurs yeah. and the lotus witch. Interesting, okay. I think I'm inclined to believe that uh, this witch is... Exerting some sort of power over this island, at the at the very least. Yeah, have you, have you ever have have, um, I guess the leader of of Folan's tribe. Have you ever met the Lotus Witch? He says, uh, "I have not, but my daughter Nessa, um, she will off a journey to the Tower of the Lotus Witch. She is good friends with the Lotus Witch's gardener. My my daughter is uh, an herbalist, you see." Nice. And you, as he says that, you look uh, over, and you see, like, just laying down, you know, like centaurs do, the horse parts, like, laying down. Um, you see laying down in this bed of flowers is a beautiful uh, centaur, and she takes this, like, a huge hit from this, uh, this like, wooden bong. <laughs> <laughs> just like rips the biggest fucking hit off of this bong. She's just surrounded by like a cloud of like skunky smoke. Mm, okay. And she looks totally stoned, just like the picture. Like she sees you seeing her and she gives like a lazy smile and starts to wave and falls over. Orin has flashbacks to Wood Hike. Says, oh, keep, keep, you keep me away from that stuff. <laughs> What is oh. that, uh... Maybe they have an excellent uh, selection of uh, munchies as well. No, Julian. Just me. Yeah, gotta stay away. <laughs> animals are the best part. Leon looks uh, lovingly at his daughter, but he also looks like, I don't know what to do with this fucking girl. Like, you don't even need an insight check to, to, to read it on his face. And Polan Polan puts the hand uh, on his father's bicep and gives a squeeze and says, uh, it will be okay, father. Leon, you mentioned earlier she doesn't have much time left. Are you referring to the curse or something else? Yes. She refuses to, as she puts it, settle on a rider. And what riders we can find, well, she can be very difficult to be around. What sort of things does your daughter appreciate? What would what would you think that she would look for in a rider? Uh, she she wants someone with a pure heart. Mm, I was gonna guess skateboarding based on a, but no. <laughs> well, I was just thinking that we could like, like tell the crew to like to like, like arc the boat and come and do something like on the beach nearby, <laughs> and see if she shows. You see, in you see her start to uh, stagger to her feet, uh, and she seems to have caught sight of your group, and then she falls down again. Hmm. Well, Sibo, she might have information about your father as well as the witch, so... I mean, you're welcome to talk to her. If you do intend to go see the Lotus Witch, please promise me you will not take my children inside that cursed tower. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Warren kind of nods. Folon says, Father, I have promised to help these heroes. Uh, I, will yeah. not, I will not back down. If they need my help, I will give it. I yes, can't... but your father is... Uh, he is kind enough to allow us to uh, traverse in these lands, and we do not wish to um, insult his hospitality. We will not demand that they follow us in if they do not wish to. Nice. Diplomatic. Well put, Zero. Well put. 
All right, we're gonna start heading heading over to uh Nessa. Nessa. Yeah. Or will you, right. will you carry me? You're faster than I am. No, Horn's making sure you're in front. You're taking okay. the lead on this. Right, 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 right. There's multiple plow hooks here, and they're all there. <laughs> you got it. Okay. As you approach, you see this uh, this creature is sort of just given up on standing up, and is just staring up at the clouds. Her eyes slightly crossed. Um, her massive bosom uh, flattened by gravity. Uh, kind of just flopping to either side. Uh, there are centaurs here that do wear clothes. Uh, this is not one of them. Um, she uh, yeah. she stares up uh, at the clouds, and then her her eyes, bloodshot, sort of unfocused from the the clouds, shift a bit, and they settle upon Sibo. Uh, I'll actually go over and lay down next to her and look up at the sky next to her oh she smiles and says you're a half I am <laughs> yeah man I love halflings I hear you uh, you may have known my father yeah um, your your father was joyous yes yeah he would talk about his Homeland near near Yande. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've been looking for him. He uh, he disappeared some time ago, and I've heard he's here. And... Yeah. I'm real sorry about that, man. I um, I showed him how to get to the tower, and he went inside, and I never saw him again. Can you show us how? Oh to yeah, get man. Of course. It's like real dangerous to try to go without me. But, like, I could take you there, like, no problem. I know all the ways through the desert, and, like, nothing ever tries to fight me. I look at Sibo, and I say, it's dangerous to go alone. And I gesture towards her, and I say, take this. <laughs> <laughs> she kind of, like, rolls her head back a little bit more, and looking at you upside down, she says, um, oh, hi. Wow, man, you like... You're, like, really sad, but recently you're really happy. I think that's good. I think, I think that, that you got to hold on to that happy, you know? Or you're going to drown, drown in all that sadness. I, uh, I don't think one will ever replace the other. That's a good attitude. You can't run away from your feelings. My name's Nessa. Uh, and Andronicus, the, the little one, Sibo. I don't know if he told you that yet. Oh. Um, yeah. Hey. Are you all named Maya or just the head? <laughs> this is another good question. Jesus, so many of these today. All. Oh, that's cool. You're like a collective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not nice. at the same time. Uh, who's this guy? I'm Julian Dimitris. Pleasure to meet you. Julian, why are you, like, keeping secrets, man? Like, <laughs> you kind of look like your butthole's all, like, bound up in a knot because you've, you've got something you want to say, but you feel like you can't say it. Everyone keeps secrets, darling. Hmm. You gotta be careful with those secrets. It makes a poison inside you. Oh, that's why I drink so much wine to well counteract the poison. Oh. My friend says that too much wine is like bad. Something about your liver, but I think I have like four of those, so I don't think wine's really an issue. But I prefer like herbs, you know? Um, you should try herbs instead. It'll give Lutheria less power over you. More Thylea in, less, less Lutheria. All right, sorry, Julian. I'm 
Do you mind if I get some of that? My name's Orin. <laughs> oh, hey, Orin. Yeah, here yeah, you go, man. Anyone who needs less I, material can I take a in them is this guy right here. <laughs> can, I take a look, can I take a look at those uh, herbs, see if I recognize them? Yeah, oh, we're yeah, just taking yeah. a hit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting the contact here. He, he told what you, Billy. He told you to, but no. What do you want me to... Do I gotta roll anything? Uh, yeah, nature? be an herb herbalism check or a nature. Oh, I meant for yeah. just taking the hit. Oh, no, no, you just take the hit. That's fine. Okay. Mm. Would this be an intelligence nature check? Or... Yeah, it would be intelligence, yeah. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. Um, if you... Oh, you have, uh... Chandra's. You have Chandra's on the team, so you'd make this with... Uh, expertise. So, what's your proficiency bonus? Plus three. Plus three. Plus three yeah. I, okay. It would have been. A... Wait, All did right. you roll as well, uh, Seagull? No. Well, you come in. Okay. You came in with a uh, six, which I guess would boost to a nine. You're not a hundred percent sure what she's got going on there. Looks like a weird mix. What she's laying in. Um, is the type of flower that does actually produce a contact high through its pollen. But it doesn't seem like that's what she's smoking. But that does mean that she's getting high from at least two different sources. Mm. So, Oren, what's the story, man? You yeah, got, like, kinda, got a lot that. going on there. Yeah, we're gonna lay down with yeah, the trio. Yeah, do it. It's yeah, a long that's... story. Oh well, you know, I got plenty of time until I turn into like a scorpion monster. So, I right mean, on. if you if you want some of that time, it's yours. <laughs> well, it's not really that much time, but yeah, I was like, know. I was. Cool. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. I don't want to be rude. You could tell me your story. That's fine, man. Or I'll just start going into it, I guess. Yeah, you'll, okay. uh, <laughs> you'll recount oh, wow. uh, where he first, uh, he'll recount some of the misfortune, misfortunes of his youth before going into uh, getting into the arm, like the, the centurions. And he'll just keep going through, like, he'll, uh, he'll spend uh, hours here if you guys let him. <laughs> oh. So you just thought that joining the military would bring you that closeness to your father that you never had as a child. You thought mm. that maybe, like, following the same path would give you a connection to him that you weren't able to ever establish through normal um, social interaction. <laughs> I follow you, man. Or kind of looks over at Sibo like, she's yeah. good. Sibo's just saying, yeah, man, over and over again. <laughs> yeah, everything that's being said. Wow, that's deep. <laughs> Um, so your survivor's guilt from being the only survivor of your um, patrol, b battalion, battalion, is that just like, it, yeah. does it just haunt you, I guess? Does it define you? Are you it's worried right. that it defines you? It gives me purpose, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's rough. Yeah, this is rough. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you guys can no, you man. Guys can head to the tower if you want My, to. Uh, the ground's real, this is real soft. It's not rough. Well, well when you have scales, it is kind of... Mm. I shouldn't say man, because you're a collective, so you're like a they-them situation. Or it rolls over and Holds the bong up to Andronicus and Maya. Um, Nessa, do you mind if I ask you some questions? Yeah, sure, man. I got a little bit of time left. Why, why do you not, um, want a rider? Do you want to turn into a scorpion? I, no, I man. understand, I understand that you are given limited options, but... Mm -hmm. I would personally prefer to maintain my sentience and not be a creep giant, uh, you know, arachnoid. I'm not trying to, like, slut shame or anything, but I just don't feel like I should just settle just because I'm going to turn into a scorpion, you know? Well, uh, 
What, what are you looking for? I agree, you shouldn't settle, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't try to find someone either. Um, what do you mean? What was the question? <laughs> oh. What 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 are you looking for in a in a writer? Oh, uh, someone that like is okay with I don't know, getting high a lot and like someone that's not afraid to like talk about their feelings like all the time. You know, someone that's like brave and strong and maybe someone that's like kind of broken and, and needs help like fixing like all the broken spots inside them I, I really I really want to find someone that's like trapped oh, their, own, their own grief you know so I could like what? help them build towards the future <laughs> and then she uh she casually reaches over and places a hand on uh on Sibo's uh chest and says or a halfling <laughs> <laughs> I like how I like how tiny you are, but like, in a weird, disproportionate way. I like that too. Yeah, like your body's real small, but your feet and your head and your hands and your and your dick—they're like normal sized. Mm -hmm. or, yeah. or or bigger. Yeah. The, yeah, or in, there's nothing normal sized about that. You wink. <laughs> <laughs> you wink. Which eye did you wink with? I'll be honest. It looks like a blink, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if I if I had been older, I might have tried to put the moves on your old man, but he was so intimidating. He had real real big dilf energy, kind of like Andronicus over there. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Thank you. I mean, you've got a chance again here. I mean, Sibo. Uh, I mean, you are you available? Nah, Sibo is like bound through some crazy eldritch pact to, um, you know, beings beyond our comprehension. Or at least a destiny mm. beyond our comprehension. You can see it, like, all around you. She just kind of waves her hand in, like, a vague kind of, you know, whoa. Yeah. Wait, um. Nessa, is this the. the... Herb talking, or are you normally this uh, insightful? What do you mean? Well, we just sort of walked up, and you're kind of reading us like, you know, parchments. Oh, uh, I don't really read much. I mean, I borrow books sometimes from my friend the gardener. She's my favorite. Oh, um, <laughs> sp speaking about the uh, gardener in the tower. I'm probably one of the only people uh, on the island that knows how to read, though. Like, my father, he says that words are what got us where we are in the first place. Whatever that means. But I tried to tell him that if our ancestors knew how to read, then they would have known that those trees shouldn't have been cut down. And he got real mad. There you go. So I went and stayed with the gardener for like two weeks. What'd you do with the gardener? And gardening. Did he, uh, tell oh, you about no, these, Oh, no, the uh... gardener's a lady. Oh, did she tell you about these, uh, the herbs? Oh, I've always been pretty good with herbs, but yeah, man, there's some wild, crazy flowers that grow outside the tower. That's what I make my personal kush from. You have some with you? Hmm? From there? Did you take some from the of those flowers from the garden? Oh yeah, man. Here? Mm-hmm. Man, okay. she kinda like feels around. She's like, uh, where'd my fanny pack go? Uh Oh. Uh she kinda rolls over, nearly killing Sibo. Mm -hmm. And she grabs the uh the fanny pack, which is sort of uh it's literally just a leather fanny pack. And she opens it up and shows you some of the crazy flowers that are within. Do I uh, recognize with any your training, of them? Yeah, with your training, these are not even flowers from the old wood. You've never seen flowers like these before. My, can, can you talk to can those I, plants? Yeah, that's what I was about to, was about to do. Um, do you mind if I uh, talk to them for a bit? They are, um, they are, they are dead. 
because they're flowers okay. that were plucked and you know they're yeah, they're, they're not they, they're, they're, they're they're so they're already dead they're already dried out and died yeah yeah can you okay. guys speak with dead animals yeah with dead plants oh could you combo spells? you could definitely combo oh yeah you could combo speak with speak with dead oh i guess my yeah. God. don't you need a skull to speak with dead though yeah, you need a skull you seen you the mirror about using that to talk with furniture speak with yeah <laughs> grab like the bulb of the plant i guess what's this the skull your, of the this plant? is your skull Dang, I never even thought of that. Maya's collective, do you are you into flowers or something? Well I'm I'm trained to, to harvest them and I, I like I really like mistletoe. She falls asleep. Mm -hmm. You uh you hear the clop uh of, of hooves and Folon approaches. He looks at his sister lovingly, but also a look on his face like, What the fuck are we gonna do with this girl? And he looks at all of you and he says, uh, how goes it? Well, I think we have a couple of candidates in the party, but, uh... Can't... Oh! Uh, he blushes a little bit. Well, that would be... That would be great. She could travel with us. I mean, I can wait until very very so I can get a smell that'll probably, you know, you know, perk her right up. Um... Do we... I, I presume we'd rather go... You know, see about Sibo's father first before trying to play matchmaker. I mean, I think they're somewhat related. She would be our guide, right? Yeah, she's got to come with us. Right, but she doesn't seem too keen or worried about uh, uh, Sibo. Uh, she, she, in her sleep, she reaches out and pulls you close like teddy bear. Nice. You are you are mashed against the greatest breast in all of Thylea. Does does Vithyria know that? Oh my god. It'd be a, be a tough contest. Okay, a tough contest. Isn't, isn't she under Thylea? <laughs> <laughs> nice, okay, that's fair. Um, yeah. I'm, I, I'm starting to fall asleep myself. I mean, we, we don't know, even know if Joyce is still alive. I'm, I'm hoping that he is, but... He's a... Uh, Versi would have told me. Versi would have told me. If he was dead. Alright then. Um, perhaps, uh... Perhaps that is the trick. I mean, I can wake her up. I could uh, generate uh, an odor that will probably um, snap her out of it. No, she'll think it's Sibo. It'll ruin the plan. Mm -hmm. you, do you think a, a, a lesser restoration might bring her back? It should, right? Well, I don't know. How, I mean, she seems to be pretty fun, easy to handle at the moment. Um, her eyes kind of flutter a bit as she looks around and says, um, Oh, hey. Oh, bro. I tried to come talk to you earlier, but I fell down. And she uh, kind of staggers to her feet. Boop. So Still holding Sable like a teddy bear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess, yeah, like uh, offhandedly. I mean, yeah. girl got an 18 strength. So. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I ain't fighting that. All right, so she heads over to Folon and says, um, uh, Hey, man. So, um... You're back, right? And he says, yeah. She's like, did you have fun? And he smiles. He says, uh, I did. And I, uh, I found a new rider. So, fellow, fellow champion and gladiator like myself. Hmm. Oh, that's good. I know you were real worried. So, you seem... You seem to be doing okay, and that's good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, are we going or what? You, I mean, I mean, it's I weird. don't have to go with you if you don't want. I could just tell you where to go. No, but I, I mean, the first hand information is always the best. And nobody, you, does, nobody messes with you. Does, right? does, yeah, does man. the gardener have an? Does the gardener have a name? Yeah, the besides, gardener. Uh, it's joyous. <laughs> besides, besides the okay. What did, what does the what does she look like? You know, she got like a, like, a long tail. I bet the gardener's gonna love this witch. I yeah. bet she. She looks, looks really. She looks really kind. You know. Oh yeah, Dad. We're going. I'm gonna take them into the desert. 
we're gonna go see the Lotus Witch. And he says, uh, uh, just don't go inside. Never go inside that tower. She's like, yeah, man, I got you. All right, so you guys head out. Tell my pop pop. All right. So you head out into the deserts. Maybe, maybe you head to the desert. Uh, let's see. Yeah, there we go. And I'll preload it. And let's see. Okay, and then we go over here. And All right. Hey man, am I am I even on this map? I don't see did you. I, did I not make the cut? No. Oh shoot. Hold on. You're so deep, that's why. You, 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 maybe you made the cut but not the paste. Nice. Uh, oh, yeah. nice. good one. Nice. Very meta. Uh, <laughs> where did I go? Oh. feel a little excluded. Okay, so normally when you're making your way through the desert, the secret is you have to know where you want to go. If you don't know where you want to go, you're not going to get there. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So I know that you want to go to the tower, and that's how we're going to get there. But if we didn't know that we wanted to get there, we'd never get there. And when she says no, it feels like the K is capitalized. So, um, Andronicos, um, what's, what's going on there, man, with, uh, I don't know, like, what's with this big Dilf energy? You, you got kids? <laughs> I did do i oh, um, yeah. i'm really they were taken from me in a manner in which i cannot get them back oh no man. Not yet. are you you gonna be like tracking them down is that is that your quest right now it's it's a goal yes i i don't really have any leads so to speak oh man the gardener told me this story once about this guy whose daughter got taken and he, like, went and killed all the people that took his daughter. It was crazy. I... I think the guy's name was, like, Liam. It was kind of a weird name. Yeah, Ooh, we sure it wasn't Liam Midas. He had a certain special set of skills. Uh, that was, that was his catch catchphrase, was he had a special set of skills. Mm -hmm. I saw that play yeah. as well. Really? They made a play about it? Yes. Oh, man. I asked a gardener how they know so much, and they say that they watch a lot of plays. But I asked them where they watch it, and they said in the tower. But I'm not allowed to go in the tower, so. But I can't believe they have a playhouse in the tower. Uh, right about there, time slows down. The sand begins to churn. And you see, one by one, massive scorpions begin to rise up out of the stand. Mm. That's a lot of scorpions. Oh, a lot of scorpions. Nessa says, uh, oh, hold on, hold on. Ho hold on. Uh, hey, guys, hey. They're with me. We're just going. We're just going to the tower, okay? Just like, be chill, right? Be cool. C keep calm it down. Come on, come on. Back to sleep. There, there, there you go. There you go. It's okay. It's okay. That that you too. Oh yeah. Okay, man. 
Ah. All right. So yeah, um, that's cool. Hmm. Yeah. So how did you? Hmm. Um. How, what did you? How? how did... Well, they just. What? They're really upset about what happened to them, but you know, they just need to know that the anger they're feeling is misdirected. You guys didn't do anything to them. You're just trying to be, you know. I mean, if they're mm -hmm. angry at someone, they should just be angry at the Lotus Witch, honestly. I mean, she's the one that cursed them. I mean, yeah, our ancestors screwed up big time, but they were ignorant. Are, is every culture that isn't well learned, are they responsible for their own ignorance? Or, you know, it's like, a, it's really deep. It's hard to know. Well, I suppose to answer your question from a certain point of view, if one knows that you can better yourself through knowledge but choose not to, you are in effect choosing ignorance and choosing not to better yourself, and therefore your ignorance is your own fault. Right, but like our ancestors were trying to better themselves. They were trying to build like a town and you know, like live like the you know a more settled life give up their nomadic ways maybe it was turning against the old traditions that got them in the situation they're in the first place maybe they were trying to be something that they never could be and then that's what caused all the problems or maybe it was just bad luck It seems like more like, at least from the story that Sibo told me, uh, told us that it seems like a, it's, the Lotus Witch got here too late and took out her frustrations on your people. Yeah. She's real bummed out about that, I think. Have you spoken to her? No, but the gardener seems to know quite a bit about her. I guess we should speak with the gardener. Oh, yeah, man. I mean, I think they're always around, so, like, yeah, that's cool. I'll give you an introduction and stuff. Oh, wait, slow down. This is usually when I hear the voice. And she starts to look around, like, waiting for something. As you approach the center of the island, the sun shines down from a clear, cloudless sky. Before you, a huge black stone tower reaches more than 200 feet into the heavens. Entry into this tower seems impossible. There are no doors and no windows. Stretching between you and the tower is a field of vibrant wild flowers. And it looks, it looks kind of like this post it in the chat. Oh. Whoa. Mm. Well, that doesn't seem ominous. Not in the slightest. Are the flowers growing in sand? Um, the sand uh, begins to convert to soil as you kind of walk through it, but initially, yes. Oh, interesting. Maya, what do these flowers say to you? Oh, none of you can huh. fly, right? No. I mean, I can... Oh, yeah. Can... Oh. Why? Do the flowers do something? No, nah, but it's like... the Legend of Zelda dungeon entrance where you can't touch the flowers. Well, the tower, like, um, doesn't seem to like things that fly, so if you fly too close to the tower, it, like, shoots oh. lightning out and kills you. Oh, okay. Right. Makes the frogs real sad because, like, there's not as many birds to eat. Frogs, frogs eat birds here? Oh, yeah, man. Frogs eat anything that fits in their mouth. How okay. how large are these frogs? I, I guess I'm kind of a frog when you think about it. <laughs> I'm always hungry, man. You got you got anything odd you see, Bo? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I pull out some uh, uh, balut. Which oh, is, wow. Uh, yeah, that it, smells terrible. Yeah. Let me have it. Okay, yeah, I give her some balut. All right. 
Um, so I'll go ahead and... Uh, um... There is no obvious path through the flowers. Do you walk through them? Um, I would ask I'd like to yeah. cast Detect Magic. Okay, I'll, uh, the, go ahead. The, the flowers, the tower, the sky um, are all magical. Interesting. I'll, I'll, I'll do my once per long rest, uh, speak with plants, and access the flowers um, if they will let us through. Oh, dang. Okay. Um, so, <laughs> all right. Uh, you cast speak with plants. And uh, you approach the flowers and say, um, "Hello. Uh, would you uh, let us let us walk through?" The flowers uh, kind of turn and say, um, "Hey, I mean, it's a free country. I don't know. I mean, do what you want to do. It's your life. I, mean, I ain't gonna well, stop. Uh, I, I hope you. Don't, I hope you don't step on me. I mean, it'd be nice if you didn't step on me, but." And then the other one's like, what do you mean, step on you? Well, I'd rather step on you than step on me. And then the other flower's like, hey, hey, don't step on nobody. No, just go away. Just go away. Nobody needs to get stepped on today. Uh, and the flowers all begin to talk at once. And there are soon hundreds of voices uh, talking to you. Leave us alone. Mm. Mm. <laughs> do you Can guys get a, a lot of... One of, them, of one of them shouts louder than the rest. Uh... Do what you want. I respect your freedoms, but don't tread on me. <laughs> hmm. Um, I'll turn to the group and say, uh, "They said we're okay. That we're okay to pass through. Just don't step on them." Well, I'll ask Nessa. Like, how, do you just walk through? Do you, what? yeah, man. You yeah. Do, they're dumb. Just step. Okay. On all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'll do my best to not step the on. The flowers, them. just like the dick of the of the plant. You know what I'm saying? Like the the, the real stuff's like underground or whatever. Mm -hmm. It'll just grow back. So they're pretty sturdy. Also, I think some of them are into being stepped on. If you know what I mean. Oh. Mm -hmm. I'll be. So, I'll, I'll, turn, I'll turn. I'll turn. What she says. I'll turn back. Do any of you are okay with being stepped on? <laughs> All right. You hear a couple of them like, "Yes, mommy, yes." Okay, and she's right. <laughs> <laughs> I, Point I those ones know. out as we go through. Yeah. Maya, without mm -hmm. an herbalism check or a nature check, you realize that some of these flowers are thirsty. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so if there's no flying. They can't really have bees. That's true. None yeah. of these. Um... All this is a, is a giant, like, bug. bug oh, <laughs> oh, you, you want to know how they, like, repopulate or whatever? They just spray their pollen everywhere, man. Hmm. You know what I try not to think about, Warren? Especially during, like, you know, the spring? Is, like, pollen is plant semen. Warren sneezes. Yeah, it's all up on your face and your body, up yes. in your nose. Yeah, man. Uh, Andronicus looks at Kira to see what her reaction is. Kira <laughs> is staring at Nessa in awe, and uh, you just see like little heart bubbles kind of floating out of her head. Uh, all thoughts of Telemachus are forgotten. <laughs> Kira, does Kira? Um, hmm, hmm. I think hmm. I'll look at Julian, look at Kira, then look at uh, Nessa, and you can see uh, Maya's a uh, uh, matchmaking. Uh, um, Cogs are turning. It'd be a lot better than Telemachus, to be sure. Julian will just shrug. I mean, if they want to do anything, that's their business. Just Telemachus is just, well, Telemachus. Oh, oh, he is amazing. Wow, man. Hold on, Julian. Your, your mother's body is like her own business, man. And her personal life, I hate to break it to you. That's her business, too. I'm well aware of that. However, if you met Telemachus, you would know just how... <laughs> Amazing he is. He seems to, like, kind of get to you. Like, is this... Does he do something bad to you besides fuck your mom? <laughs> tried. Tried to fuck my mom. Oh, no. No, that happened. Yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah. I kind of feel like that's the vibe here. Yeah, like, he's yeah. definitely banging your mom. 
Oh, I'm gonna kill that bastard. But uh, why, man? Geez. Why be jealous over your mom? That's like some, uh, <laughs> that's like some Oedipus stuff, right? Mm-hmm. I don't want If you don't to... know who Oedipus is, the gardener was telling me he's a dude that, like, ended up, like, marrying his mom. And he was, like, really into it. But he didn't know it was his mom until it was, like, too late. She says that he's from a different timeline. I don't know what that means. Wow, you're very insightful. Mm -hmm. I need to learn from you. No, I mean, I'm not trying to make anybody upset here. You're certainly not trying not to make anyone upset. No, man, I'm not trying to... Well, you said insightful, right? I'm not trying to incite you. Insight. Oh, you're doing a really good job of inciting us. No, no, no. Mm. Calm, calm it down. I don't want to incite you. All I'm saying is I'm trying to look after my mother. That is all. So okay. And Telemachus is not a good person. We just happened to save him from himself when we were trying to save some other folks uh, he's a we, good we person broke up a, we, we broke up a roving group of bandits and telemarcus uh -huh. just happened to be the one that we kept we saved for questioning he's such a and now guy. he's been a plague ever since oh it, upwards constantly and you kind of feel like in a way like everything he does is your fault or responsibility because in a way you made him mm -hmm. no i just find him irritating wow man that's wild. It's almost like your son's banging your mom. <laughs> it's inescapable. I'm, I'm not having this conversation anymore. Oh. And Julian walks over to Atticus mm. and tries to um. fish the uh, rubber chicken from him. <laughs> just playing fetch. Wait, the, okay. Ju Julian, his, his name is Atticus, not Oedipus. I think you, you had it I there. said Atticus. I said that. <laughs> Uh, Folon whispers to you, Andronikos, and says, Do you see the problem we're having? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Julian really needs to get over these mother hang-ups. <laughs> well, I mean, I agree 100% friend, but I, I meant with my sister. I, I mean, she provokes introspection. That's not a bad thing. I love it. Imagine growing up with that. <laughs> I, I mean, yes, I can, I can see that, but there's a reason I, I became like... a traveling gladiator at a young age. But now that now that you're now that you're both older, I, I think that you can learn to appreciate her for the person she is, rather than the annoying little sister she was. He stares at you, and his eyes turn into two dots, and his mouth turns into a straight line, and he says, "Sure, <laughs> something to work on." All right. I, I think I think I think Andronicos is becoming just like her. As you enter the field of wildflowers, the sun zips across the sky and sinks into the eastern horizon. The sky darkens until it is decorated with twinkling stars. After a few minutes, the sun rises from the west and sets again in the east. Mm. This day-night cycle repeats over and over and over and over and over until the sun becomes a streaking blur, until your surroundings become a blur, until you become a blur. And suddenly, the night sky comes back into focus, and you find yourselves before a sandstone path leading to stairs that lead up towards the tower. All right, I'll take you over to the map. Ooh, that's pretty. Yeah, man, that last part gives me vertigo every time. <laughs> Whoa. Will I be early, Those hypnotodes. Oh, yeah, those are the frogs, man. Aren't they cute? That one looks mm. gushy. Well, I gotta reset my phone. Oh, my right. goodness, this is so fucking cute. Oh, let me see it. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, yeah. Wait, what's cute? The lipothrees. Oh, I thought you th thought 
that this this cutie frog was cute, but Wait, that, that I was can't, cute too. That was I cute. can't oh. see. Ah, oh, my shift Z's no. broke. Ah, oh, the worst feeling as a DM when your shift Z breaks. So, you got a fix for that, Founder Sage? I tried refreshing. Uh, if if it does, if it's not working, it's because something's wrong with that token. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. Okay, it's not working for any of them. Oh, you know what? Caps lock is on. Derp. There we go. You gotta be careful, yeah. Sibo. Yeah, Sibo, you can't go near those guys. They'll eat. Actually, none of you should go near those frogs. They'll eat you. They, Noted. Uh, Noted. Yeah. What's their, uh... <laughs> what's their reach? <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a great question. Because uh, um, I have a little control up there. I mean, they know like they know the other frogs from the other ponds, but I think beyond that, they don't really know too many other people. Nice. So I'd say their reach is probably limited to just these two ponds. That's, that's Pretty fair. small friend groups. Fair, yeah. How uh, long are their tongues? I think it was more oh, of like their tongues. Tongue oh, life. that's a great question. Um, I would say like 15 feet. Maybe? Okay. Do we right. want to tie ourselves together for this? Mm. Oh, look! There she is. Do you see her? There yeah. she is. The gardener. It looks like it seems to be a centaur. Yeah, this is, uh, this is she a centaur. She is. Uh, she's the lower body of a snake. Uh, a snake, naga. Uh... Lamia. I think, I think, yeah, a lam, a lam, Lamia. Lamia, I think, Lamia. Yeah, I think I, a real Lamia, not the bullshit Dungeons and Dragons kind. Oh, um, snap. Yeah, let me go grab you yeah. the art for that. The, uh... Julian, I've got the rope ready, but it's, it's if you remember the ice bridge, it's kind of a it's an ordeal yeah. to, to get this going. Oh, I so, know the snake. Then there perhaps maybe just like a lasso or something. Yeah, so she case. she has the upper body of a human, uh, or humanoid, and the lower body of a serpent. Um, there are, according to legends, Medusa that wind up like this, but right. she does yeah. not have any serpentine hair or any scales mm -hmm. on her human body. So what? she, these creatures are not unknown to people trained in like history, um, but they are certainly very rare. But they are called Lamia or Lamia. Do what do I know about them? Can I can I check that as I see it? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so within this setting, um, they, uh, <laughs> eesh, um, they were uh, they they like to eat children. Whoop! All right. Yeah. Um, they Ooh, have, yeah. they have the lower body of, uh, a serpent and because of their uh, appetite for babies, uh, they are not well loved, uh, by any, um, they were and are hunted by most sentient races, yeah. um, and are basically uh, nearly extinct, uh, but sense. They have incredible um, potency and potential for enchantment and illusion magics. Okay. I make my which, of course, they use to bamboozle people and then eat their babies. Right. Yeah. Which is, I will. Will probably hate these guys. Yeah. Um, um, a lot of people think that uh, they are in some way related to Lutheria because. You know, they're, they're baby evil. jokes. Yeah, yeah they're, they're yeah. yeah, they're an evil monster. They like to eat babies. Um, but the full history of them is actually unknown, even to Sibo. Just simply oh. that they are. Uh, there used to be a lot more of them. Nowadays, there aren't. Um, and that's kind of the. That's kind of all. All you know. So. Mm -hmm. Let's go. All right. The gardener seems to be playing with a small Cerberus puppy. Yeah. Oh. It's so cute. I remember this this creature. I make my yes, spear. The last one we had to deal with was um, a good bit bigger. Oh, yes, but if raised, if raised from a pup, think of the ally it could make. <laughs> I uh, I make my beard as fluffy as possible to make sure oh. that I don't look like a child. Well, I'm oh. not walking it. 
Nessa says, um, <laughs> hey, uh, Sivo, these stairs are pretty steep, man. You want to you wanna ride on my back? It would be my horseback. Yes. <laughs> ah, don't tell anyone I called it a horseback. Okay. I think that's super racist, I, but I heard baby I think back. I think horses are kind of cool, you know. Like it must have been the way that humans felt when they first found monkeys, you know. Right. Yes. Like I see a horse and I'm like, wow, that's really fucked up centaur, but it's kind of cool, you know. Imagine what horses think. Mm -hmm. Plus, the gardener was telling me that there's a world where everyone that lives there is just a horse. Yeah. And there's yeah. like, they have, some of them have like magic horns on their heads. Oh some of them have wings. It's crazy. There's like oxes and goats and stuff. And apparently like friendship is magic. Oh, sounds wonderful. Yeah. Oh, don't enough. fall off, little buddy. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you like it up there? It's pretty nice, right? Uh, yeah. I don't know what got yeah? You can get used to that. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah. So I. Uh, if you go to, if you feel like you're gonna fall off, you could just uh, reach around and just grab onto my boobs. Uh, I'll pull on the hair. <laughs> oh, well, okay, that works. <laughs> wow, uh, man. As we only saw a video we explained that perhaps centaurs evolved in a similar way to anglerfish have that dangly thing. <laughs> oh yeah. The, the human part was just all like a, like a trick in their actions. Yes. Like, that's oh, a fantastic. So disturbing. That's so so disturbing. disturbing. <laughs> and then, like, the human crotch area just opens to be this huge gaping mouth. Oh, yeah, oh my oh, god. Yeah. Amazing. <laughs> Alright, so the gardener uh, stops uh, playing with the puppy, uh, who begins to make mewling sounds and run around uh, in circles, uh, demanding attention in three distinct, different, uh, annoying dog sounds. Uh, Andronicus does that thing where you like motion for the dog to come over because he wants to pet it. Do, oh, the, yeah. do the sounds sound like bud wise or <laughs> they do not. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but I bet you could get these guys to do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the gardener um, looks to Dessa and slithers up. Ed uh, gives him a quick hug. It's kind of the hug that a person who doesn't like to be touched gives mm -hmm. if they are trying to be like polite to someone they know who likes to get yeah. hugs. Does that make sense? Yeah, arms don't fully wrap around. They kind of stay right, really right, close. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah. You can tell Nessa wants like a real hug, but like this is the most the gardener is capable of, of giving. Uh, and the gardener says, uh, Ah, Nessa, who are your friends? And Nessa introduces all of you. and says, This is the gardener. She's like my best friend. And the gardener looks at all of you says, uh, interesting. It's good to see you again, Julie. Mm. Mm. Oh. I see you're keeping secrets. That's good. You, you just see Julie making that motion of, uh-uh, nope, nope, nope. The Julie mist? Again? <laughs> like In, flying across the neck. Insight check! Okay, Inside. you may insight check Julia. Julia, give me a performance or deception. Guidance myself. <laughs> oh, shit. I'll guidance myself, too. <laughs> oh, no. I kick Julian so that he gets disadvantaged. Yes. <laughs> Julian, you can get a, you can get a bonus action Kyra inspiration if you wish. Yeah. All right. <laughs> uh, Debo, I guess, I guess we got to hop into the other chat real quick. I'd like to succeed in the call. Um, I will succeed at a cost then? You cannot even come okay. close to okay. hitting his uh, insight. Okay. I, I guess I wasn't high enough. Uh, you, uh, I will talk to you next. Okay. Okay. Well, fuck. All right. Uh, let's see. Interesting. All right. Um, let's see. Surely <laughs> really don't you have your lucky point from uh, volleyball? <laughs> I'm not going to that all day. <laughs>
uh, principle, yeah. This is how it always feels whenever secret chat. It feels like we're sitting outside of the principal's office. You hear him getting chewed out in the next yeah. room. Uh huh. And everyone's doing the ooh. <laughs> oh, see, I told you, Julian, you got those secrets. I don't know what you're talking about. It's okay, man. Sometimes it's for the best, and sometimes you've been like forced to keep secrets by some kind of oath or something. Wait, is this snake your grandmother? <laughs> the gardener laughs Julian and says, just rolls his eyes. J Julian's grandmother, me? Oh my gosh, that's that's rich. Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I shouldn't have embarrassed you, Julian. But uh, it's nice to see you again. It's good to see you, too. <laughs> again. Oh, um, Nessa, why are they here? And Nessa says, oh, they, they want to talk to the Lotus Witch. And Nessa says, uh, says, do you think maybe she could not do horrible things to them? Or... <laughs> I kind of like some of them. I mean, they're all really nice. They got a lot of, like, emotional baggage they're carrying around. A lot of tragic backstories and, you know, epic <laughs> destinies. So, and the gardener says, um, I am not responsible for what these free-willed individuals decide to do. If they truly want to enter, there is the door. Ooh. But know this. Oh. Only the true heroes of prophecy may enter. No gods, no advisors, no dark passengers, no himbos. Same no, are good. No stalwart friends. Oh, yeah, never mind. No. And no hopefuls. Um, how do I know if I'm a god or not? <laughs> uh,. She smiles and says, currently, you are not a god. Okay. All right. So, stand before the door, I suppose. Yeah, Orn will turn to the rest and say, uh, if it's all the same, I'm going to wait outside with the, the rest here. The, the gardener cocks their head why are you afraid I'm afraid of know. leaving these ones alone Nessa says, think, they won't um, be alone I'll, I'll stay here with them it's okay Orton's probably one of the bravest among us I think it's more of a um, long term strategy am I, am I right The, the Ultros is still fresh in my mind. I think it'd be best if at least one of us stayed behind with these one, with uh, everybody else. Uh, Nessa says, oh, this is your survivor's guilt, man. Because you... That's like, not, not the time, all right? Jeez, come on. <laughs> Did you lose someone on the Ultros and Maybe now you you're afraid that it's like all it's like happening all over again, man? Hey, come here. Come here. Come here. Uh, she, Nessa, she, she pulls Nessa, you into a hug. And she don't just get too close to the to the, the frogs. Ah, <laughs> uh, no, nah, man, I'm too big for that. Yeah, but you pulled Orin. Yeah, Orin uh, duck out. He'll duck out of the way. I'd never let them have Orin. Hey, buddy. Hey, listen. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. Orin looks gonna... away. No, huh. no, no. Every everyone's gonna be okay. This time. This time, everyone's going to be okay. I want an insight check. Okay. Guidance. <laughs> looking, looking between Nessa and the gardener. Guidance. Okay, okay. Um, you have never met a person more earnest and honest and pure than this centaur. Other than Sibo, yeah. 
No. Do, ignore that last part. Uh, <laughs> Mm-hmm. Folon Morning. says, uh, my, my sister may be strange, but I trust her. Yeah, Orl and Dad. Um, let's and see. Orin, as they're talking to you, Folon just looks like Harak. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah, and Orin's gonna, he'll say, give Nesta me... just looks like Kirak. I'll come in, give me ten minutes, and, uh, he'll begin to cast Clairvoyance, centering the, uh, the orb like right here okay and then i think with that i should can i can you this is like a familiar where you can warg back and forth when you cast a spell you choose seeing or hearing see i guess you would choose seeing okay and then uh, can you like turn it off and on as long as you're concentrating on it i guess uh yeah. so you can like go back and, okay all right yeah we'll do that then I uh, I feel your pain, on, but I think we'll be all right this time. Uh, Atticus and Philippa Threes begin sniffing each other's butts. So cute. It might be best if, since you're not trying to throw the theory off the scent, if we had your full attention in, out in there, in the present. Mm-hmm. I can, I can do both, and uh, yeah, Warren will cast that, and uh, can I follow along? Um, Gardner. Hmm. Um. Have you have you met the uh, the Lotus Switch before? Of course. Um. In that case, any what, advice? Yeah, what is she like? Oof. Gosh. She is very bitter. Very lonely. Very dangerous. And my advice to you is to grow up. I, Andronicus looks at Julian. Well, if we're all ready, let's head on in. <laughs> We've got ten minutes before I go outside. I won't compromise on this. I Man. don't know if you're necessarily going to be in a position to make demands or anything. Yeah, no, I hear it. Just I, I, I'll leave. I'll leave Sophia here. And I can go in and out of Sophia. If there's a concern you have, I can look through. Well, you her. all can you all can stay, of course, but I won't. We won't. I don't want to repeat the same mistakes. It's kind of our mantra. It is our mantra. Or, and they were with us last time. Yeah. No, I mean, I, or is referring to the ship where we left them above deck to go bump around down below. And then we came back up, and they were just in chains. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It snowballed from there. You can see on, like, yeah, Lauren's face is kind of like one of this is like a... I mean, Ness has been hitting on his... He's got some... I don't know. Hello? All right. Um, I don't know. I don't know what I need to say to convince you, Orin, But I, uh, that's not. I'm giving you ten minutes, Julian, before I need to go back outside. I don't think you're gonna get those ten minutes, my friend. Who does uh, somebody no. somebody touch the door or knock or? Siba has touched the door. Okay, as you do, um, you and your allies are disintegrated. Whoop. Right, well, it's not a problem anymore at all, is it? It truly is. Coming back as Hirak. We're just integrating. We can't talk. Yes, good role playing. Thank you, Julius. You just, you just get malevolent intent from your your 
particles. I'm glaring at you through the ether. <laughs> Alright, um... Even though you were... dead... Um, you hear, maybe? Do you guys hear anything? A, a baby? Or a kazoo? Oh. oh, no, it's a baby. That's a baby. Huh, I wonder I why can't I hear can't anything. hear it. Yeah, I can't hear anything. Hmm. Oh, I wonder if it's because I left the chat and came back. Oh, yeah, yeah hold on. I mean, it's playing right now. Nah, it's because we left chat. We went to secret chat. Yeah, it's, I can't hear it's, it. it's it's done. Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, we'll go to none, and I'll try to reconnect it real quick. Okay, there it is. Okay, yeah, I can hear. <laughs> okay. All right. So yeah, you guys hear baby sounds uh, in your disembodied selves as you just sort of drift through. I don't know nothingness. Yeah. Um. Andronicos, uh, you could feel the membrane of the egg, question mark, do, uh, rupture, and you could feel yourself, uh, being born. Uh, short, short, uh, each of you tumbles into existence, uh, a naked baby. Oh my god, baby Andronicos is so fucking cute! <laughs> Oh, baby orcs. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> what the heck? So, uh, yeah, Maya, you uh, stumble to your toddler feet, and uh, you look around. You see other babies in the room. You know that you your name is Maya, <laughs> but you know nothing else about anything. Uh, your name is Maya, and you are, you, you are a baby. Uh, you look over and you see a very handsome baby. He got big. He got yeah, big trouty mouth. He got big trouty mouth. <laughs> Speaking of trouty mouth, there's a little fish baby. Uh, and then you see a very small baby. In very small. <laughs> the feet is still the same size. And then there is a baby who towers among the other babies. Uh, and this baby. It looks like he's already <laughs> well into his adult years. He's got a good tea. <laughs> he's right here. This baby is naked, but someone forgot to cut his umbilical cord, which dangles from his belly button like a long, sinuous rope. Oh my god. This is uh, some cannon here. Yes. It looks like he's still concentrating on a spell. <laughs> I mean, if he died at one point, then... So this baby uh, over here, he looks over at you, and in baby, he says, uh, Hey, look at this! New recruits! New recruits! Welcome to the baby factory. Don't get the wrong idea. We don't make babies here. We make stuff for, for the lady. So you gotta make stuff, yeah? Good. No arguments. All right. Let's see. Hey, you there! Yeah, dummy! Yeah, poopy pants! Yeah, you! Oh, speaking of poopy pants, you guys probably want some diapers, yeah? Mm. Yeah, hold on. And he tosses you guys some diapers. Well, put them on! Uh, I, don't want, I, don't want shit on I don't want shit on the floor! I put it in my mouth. No, no, put, no. Close. I, I Very close. Head. Look at me. Look at me. And he takes his diaper off, and he puts his diaper back on. I look at him, and then I put the diaper in my mouth. No, no, no. One more time, one more time. Takes his diaper off, he puts his diaper back on. I turn the diaper upside down and put it in my mouth. Mm. Almost, almost there, almost there. T take the diaper off. I'm going to show you. Here you go. Put the diaper I, I on. I take the diaper off my head and I throw it at Steve-O. Oh, my God, there's Velcro on these diapers. It ain't that hard. All right, just line up. I'll put the diapers on you. Yep, the, the, yep. There All you right, go. but you don't, you don't get any powder. You got to earn that. All right, here you go. Diaper. 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 You, yeah, you peed your diaper it. already? Oh my gosh, guys, yeah, come on. I pee on him as he's about to put the diaper on. <laughs> you think this is the first time a baby's peed on Leander, the boss baby? Come on now. Crested digitation. And the, <laughs> the pee pee disappears. I wish. Hey, you there, no, get away from that. That's my notes. Hey, get out of there. Get I down there. trying to climb up on the no, table. No, no, put, put your diaper on. 
Hey, if you don't if you don't get in line, I'm gonna call the mean lady. The mean lady's gonna come down and you're gonna get in trouble. I'm curious, what age are we supposed to be? Um, you guys are Rugrat age from the Nickelodeon show Rugrats. Okay, I'm absolutely I'm climbing on shit too. Yep, that's happening. Okay. All right. Or, or like, if you're if you're older than that, Crash Jim and Sibo, you're Muppet Baby age. Ah, oh, all right, all right, okay, all right. Okay, nice. Oh, this is bad. No, get get over here. Come on. Ah, uh, you kidding me? Orin snaps a salute. Now this is a baby <laughs> that's going places. All right, listen. Orin's just a three-year-old. Already. What's your What's your name, <laughs> baby? Yeah, Orin's already a toddler. Orin's already a toddler. Uh, he just kind of uh, he's a late he's a late speaker though, so he's kind of burbles out something. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine, kid. Hey, listen, you're gonna come over here. You gotta come over here, and you're gonna help this poopy pants right here. You're gonna help this poopy pants. Just, they're filling some orders. These are billets. I don't know okay? what this glowing orb is, but I touch it. Uh, oh my god. Alright, hold on. Let me pause same, the game. Same over here. <laughs> same. <laughs> Alright. Trying to work my job here, guys. You only have 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta get it done in 10 minutes. Orin uh, walks out the door as a fucking three-year-old. All right, so ba baby Sibo, baby Sibo, as you touch the orb, um, you take fifty points of acid damage Ooh, and you oh melt, shit. you melt into a puddle and die. Yep. Um, baby Andy, you are frozen solid. You shatter and then you die. Okay. <laughs> Worth it. Casualties looking right. high for this one. All right. Um, you guys respawn. <laughs> They can. Right. Even you know what? Oh my you know God. what? Yeah. We're just gonna work on one at a time. That's fine. So listen, uh, Oren, uh, I think that's your name. I feel I got a feeling that's your name. You look like an Oren. All right, listen, come over here. Oh, you're big. All right, come on. <laughs> so what we're doing here? Go ahead and tell her, poopy pants. Tell her what you're doing. She says, uh, "All right, listen. This is what we're doing. We're taking these pieces of paper, and then we're we're rolling them." And then we're putting the little wax stamp, and then we're stamping them. And then you put them in the mouth of this skull. And then they get sent out to the customers. Okay? You try it. You try it. Pick, yeah. up, the, pick up the parchment. Make, roll it. Stamp it. In the mouth. Come on. All right. Oh, I'll, gonna... I'll, yeah, I'm pausing so you can, yeah. Yeah, move over and uh, let's see what he's got here. All right, Julian, do you start climbing the stairs? Oh, yeah. All right. Um, yeah, you, that's where he went straight off. <laughs> you are, you climb the stairs, uh, and you come Oof, all the way, you rough. come all the way to the top of the stairs, you keep climbing, and you climb up out of the floor and are at the bottom of the stairs again. Or in a, gets a negative three. I heard of this. This is what they call that's a right. paradox. Oh, wow. So, yeah, you just start eating the billet. He uh, looks over, snaps another salute, and then goes back to eating. <laughs> Leander says, no, no, ah, this is just like purgatory. I get babies every day, babies in here. How am I supposed to run a business with babies? All right, listen, poopy pants, you got this. He's on you. Any mistakes he made are coming out of your powder supply. Yeah, that's right, them diapers chafe. You want that powder, don't you? All right, let's see what we can do. Hey, you, on the stairs. You ain't going to go nowhere. Only grown-ups can go up the stairs. All right, let's see. We got you three right here. Oh man, there's nothing here. There's barely any baby. <laughs> yeah. Okay, kid. Listen. Uh, you obviously having some linguistics issues. Uh, we're gonna go ahead. You know what? Why don't you go? Why don't you go see what they're doing over there? There you go. Go. Go on. Get. Get out of here. Yeah. Go over there. Yeah. Okay. As you approach, this young siren says. Um, Oh, hey there, little guy. You coming to help out? Mm-hmm. Okay, this is where we do, this is where we pirate music. Tell you me like more. Do you like music? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we use these magical discs to steal music from all over the multiverse, and then we sell it to customers for a discount, and the original musicians get nothing. <laughs> Okay. You, you wanna tr you wanna try? You just gotta spin those discs. Uh -huh. Give me a dexterity check. Shit. 
Okay, okay. 14 is pretty good. I feel like there was some potential there. Okay, yeah, you, go go ahead. Spin some spin some discs, man. You're doing great. Mm -hmm. And he picks you up, and he fly, flies you to the top of the table. All right, you're doing great. You're doing great. Take, um, get one big boy point. Mm, okay. So, uh, real quick, I would like to point uh -huh. out that I'm resistant to cold damage, so I only took 25 damage. In that. Okay, is that enough to overkill a baby? Uh, yes, absolutely. Okay, all right. <laughs> Okay. All right, listen, pretty baby, pretty baby. What's uh, your name? What's your name, kid? Uh, Each of Julian. you knows your name, but that is all you know. Are you able to say it though? That's the real question. Julian. Oh, I mean, he's, he's oh, speaking. He's speaking baby. No, oh yeah, okay, that's fair. He's speak. He's speaking baby. You guys all speak baby. You see Rugrats. Oh, okay. That's fair. Yeah. I didn't realize Baby was he, a different language other than... Uh, how else did Baby Dill talk to everybody? Uh, magic? Yeah. Ooh, true, true. Julian. Which is Which is the language of Baby. It checks out. <laughs> fair enough. Julian. Ah, okay. I like your accent, kid. That's good. Uh, alright. Yeah, wait a minute. Have I seen you around before? <laughs> Maybe. Okay, okay. You see... Oh, okay. You seem like you know what you're doing. All right, come over here. You're going to work on the time tuners. Okay. Okay. So this is where we take concentrated GD uh, dust, and we turn it into time sand, and then we put it... You know what? I ain't going to explain this shit. Okay. Then this uh, this baby right here says... uh. Okay, so listen up. This is where we take the genie dust and we turn it into the sand of time, and then we put it into these hourglasses, and then we put the hourglasses in the boxes, and then they get sent out to the customers. That's pretty good. Okay. Okay, so you could go ahead and measure the sand. All right, give me an intelligence check. Oh no. <laughs> Hey. Nice, nice. Thanks. Oh, all right. Take a big boy point. Wow, you're really good at this. Have you done this before? Yes. All right. Leander uh, comes back and says, uh, "Okay, baby, get down off that table right now. Those are my special notes. They got special information and notes and stuff." As he as he comes over, he has Maya has paper inside of her snake head, snake mouth. No. Nope, spit it out. Spit it out. You don't want that there. That's bad. Come on. Uh, she, Come uh, on down. Keep, Come on keeps down. Eye, keeps eye contact mm -hmm. and then uh, slowly uh, go, walks towards the side uh -huh. and tries to get off the table on, on the side away from him. All right, give me a dexterity uh, check. Oh, very nice, very nice. Yeah, you climb down, no problem. Okay, she takes. She tries to run towards the red orb, and uh, okay, <laughs> throws paper inside there. Oh no! Okay. Um. Yeah, you run over and you start throwing paper into the uh, flame orb. Ha <laughs> ha! And he's just losing it. No, you can't. Oh <laughs> no! The mean. Uh oh, mean lady's gonna come down. You gotta watch out. And you hear <laughs> little buyers of pyro. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> you hear the clicking Makes sound <laughs> of shoes on stairs. Uh. And you see a very mean lady come down the stairs. Oh the mean lady God. looks at all of you, <laughs> and, and as she appears, all the babies stop crying. <laughs> Some of the shoot up paper just falls out of Warren's mouth. <laughs> and she says, uh, hmm. And Leander runs up and says, uh, "Hey, I didn't do it. All right, this, these new babies are a mess. They ain't, they ain't listening. They're just, they're just going crazy." And she looks down at him and says, "Uh, hmm, Leander, are you the boss, baby?" And he says, "Uh, ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm the boss, baby." She's speaking in baby. Uh, she is. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> What a twist. And she says, well then, 
if you're the boss baby, you're responsible for all the babies, aren't you? And he says, well, yeah, yeah, but uh, that one over there, she's, she's setting all the notes on fire. And this one right here keeps killing himself. And that one right there, he trying hard, but there's nothing going on in his brain sack. <laughs> he can't even stamp the papers. He keeps eating them. And honestly, this one trying to put a diaper on him, it was like when the SpongeBob guy was trying to help the pig dude put, open the jar. And she says, uh, hmm, I see. I'll deal with the little pyromaniac, but you need to get the others in line. You there, child. And Am she, I old? Uh, uh, still sitting, like, looking towards the orb, just turn her head towards her. What are you doing? I should point at the, the orb. It seems to me that you're playing. Babies don't play. Babies work. Mm. This is a baby sweatshop. <laughs> Babies in a sweatshop sweat from working very hard. Uh, you, does this thing give off heat? Oh, it does. Okay. Uh, I hope. Well, I'll see if. Uh, hmm. She's speaking, baby. I guess I would under. I don't know if I would mm -hmm. understand sweat. Okay. But she'll look at uh, her and then look at the puddle, of sweat, and then look at the fire and then continue looking at the fire orb. Hmm. I see. <clears throat> You have the potential to be quite clever. Hmm. Perhaps there could be some work for you. Yes. Certainly. Why don't we find you work to do over at the copyright infringement table? <laughs> Come here. Come on. And she uh, starts leading you by the hand. Uh, while she's doing that, I'm, I'm still longing looking at the fire orb. And as you walk past this platform right here, <clears throat> a disembodied voice says, uh, Hey, baby, you got a poopy diaper? You want me to clean your poopy diaper? Step onto the platform and I'll clean your poopy diaper for you. Hmm? Poopy diaper? Hmm? Uh, my, my looks down and realizes that she never put on her diaper. Do you have poopy diaper? The mean lady no. just dra drags you along. And she says, uh, you there, explain to her what's going on. And you, if you leave this table again, it will be bad for you. Now you, you little fish. And Andronicus, the fledgling paladin, uh, stands there, <laughs> legs spread wide, fists on his hips, and looks her in the face and says, no! <laughs> But but in common, it's your first word you learn. Yes, yes. This is this is canon. My first word. <laughs> okay. Um, she says, uh, mm, "Bad baby," uh, and she fires the magic missile at you. Uh, that'll do it. All right. Uh, your head explodes. I am not. Wait. Oh no, I am overkilled. Oh my god. Okay, so I guess I'm gonna pull a Doctor Strange here. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Well, show back up, march right back over. No! <laughs> Alright, let, let me get you a fresh body. We're gonna leave your other body there as an example to yes. the others. <laughs> All right. Or just on the table, kinda gingerly resumes eating. Starts so, with the hands under this toddler. <laughs> As, as as she's as she's doing that, as Andronic is constantly walking up and saying no, Maya's gonna try and sneak back to the fire orb. Okay. <laughs> this toddler says, uh, "Wait, wait, wait! I want to show you how it works. Hey, come here, look." Yeah, I'll, I'll let's see how it works first. Maybe there's okay. something to do with fire here. So he, there's a intricate spider web uh, on the table, and the toddler reaches <laughs> into it and he pulls out a scroll, and he says, "So we go into this web." And we take out the original content. 
And then we copy the content. How, how then... wide would you say this web is, Crash? Like as wide as the world, perhaps? Oof. It's, you know, that's a very metaphysical question. Um, the, the, the part of the web that you can see is small, but there's implications that it goes very far. That each of the strands is maybe a series of tubes. Um, seeing that it's a spider web and knowing uh, Maya's uh, transpiration from a while back, uh, mm -hmm. uh, she's definitely going to be interested in the spider web. Oh shit! It's funny you mentioned fanspiration because I have a post-it note here. Someone gave uh, a fanspiration today to Mythic uh, during the prep stream. Uh, specifically, it is from uh, Maleficus to Telemachus. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow! Wow! <laughs> oh, he's so great. Uh, so yeah. And then we, after we copy it and we change it so that it's slightly different, we put it into this web. And then the loading switch gets all the credit for it. Might as well do, do it, try it once. Mm -hmm. It's pretty fun. Yeah. It makes a whooshing sound. <laughs> you, want to, you want to try it? She nods. Okay. Yeah. Uh, go ahead and give me a um, give me a dexterity check. Mm -mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You you put it back where it came from. You like put it back into the uh, and he says, "No, nah, no, you go cause a whoop. You go cause a whoop. You can't do that. No, okay. You you, you screwed that up. That's okay. You just keep trying. Try again." Yeah, look, this is a fun homebrew spell from Reddit. Uh, we're going to change it and then publish it as uh, a unique product for the Logic Switch. Nice. Do you try again? Okay, there you go. And it makes a satisfying sound as it travels into the, uh, the other web. Mm-hmm. You gain a big girl point. She looks at it and then looks back at the fire orb and looks at it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <Kinda>. so. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh no, make a make a wisdom uh, saving throw to see if you could resist uh, your pyromaniac uh, impulses. Okay, yeah. I mean, it, you, it's tempting, but the whooshing sounds is good, and big girl points are good. So, mm -hmm. you know. All right, baby Andy, as you approach, uh, the bean lady says, uh, Oh, little fish, have you not learned your lesson yet? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> just like, like, just once again, feet, feet wide, hands on hips, chin up, facing directly towards her. Mm -hmm. No. Okay. Um, she says, uh, mm, interesting. <laughs> Just annihilates the whole row of babies back here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. 100 feet long. And then you are birthed back into the world. Now, the rest of you, get back to work. Warren's eating all of the paper. He holds it up triumphantly. Uh, when she says that, I will, will yell out no, the same way Andronica says, and then go ahead and do her work. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, she looks around and she says, um, I will not lose control of these babies! You must listen! Mm. And then when she says that, I will say no and then continue to try and do her work. <laughs> All right, she looks and sees that you are doing your work. Um, baby Julian, what the hell? What was that intelligence check for? To see if you're doing your work correctly? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's what, that's what right. my last dex... That was my last dex check, too. Oh, your dex check is great. You get yeah. two big boy points. Yeah. That right, puts right, you at right. three big boy points. You're now, you're now one years old. I, uh... 
I pick up a piece of of myself here, and, and I uh, I hit her with it. Oh my god, Dude, baby tritons are hardcore. Yeah. None of you have ever had infants. Today is a good day to die. Okay. Um. Yeah, give me a give me a attack roll. Just in so baby, you're... in baby, he shouts like, "Down with the!" I don't know, proletariat yeah, or something. <laughs> Down with the sickness. All right, go ahead and give me a um. Here, I'll turn on the factory music since you're uh, th the babies are afraid to cry in front of this woman. Oh wow. Um, as you go to punch her, uh, she has very dense, mean muscles, and you punch into her shin. Uh, she looks down at you. And you need to make a constitution saving throw. Do I really need to, though? <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, you, you made it. All right, you uh, you yeah, jump out of the dead. way. Yeah, but it's, you rolled a 19. Okay. Uh, oh, my right, God. Holy spray. shit. She is going to roll into combat uh, officially. And that is where we will pick up next week is whatever <laughs> babies want to join this upstart baby Andy uh, and his rebellion certainly can. Those of you who like to work hard, like baby Siba, who's now two years old because he keeps racking up the <laughs> big boy uh, you certainly can. However you <laughs> want to handle this, that's your business. And that's that's the end of the session. Nice. I'll take you back to the wider world. Oh my goodness. Is, 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 I have to ask, is this actually an adventure? Uh, yeah, you get if you go into the tower, you get turned into babies. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's going to take yeah. longer than 10 minutes. Uh, so, <clears throat> I mean, there is a baby sweatshop in the adventure. Um, what they make in the sweatshop is not necessarily uh, copyright infringement. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And, yeah. But uh, you know. Um yeah, also big shout out to Red who made your guys baby tokens. Apparently so, yeah, those were amazing. Apparently yeah. Red signed up for Snapchat just to use the baby filter on your artwork. Oh my <laughs> god. Yeah. That is amazing. yeah. So it turned out really, really good. Uh, can we, those... can you post the post the baby pitch the baby art in the Discord? Uh yeah, I'll throw it up in the Discord. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we are rolling into December. From what I understand, I don't think we're going to miss any games in December. Um, I don't think we're going to miss any games in December. Uh, I think Christmas is like a Saturday. I mean, we'll play it by ear. Um, right. if it looks like, if it, if it looks like more than two people won't be able to make it, or it looks like if two people can't make it for any of the games in December, we will cancel those games. Um, because I don't want people to miss out on content because they have holiday obligations or whatever. Um, but yeah, we are, we do need to be cognizant of that as we head into December because it's going to be that stuff. Um, there's two more games of Storm King's Thunder. Um, it is a level 15, 16 adventure. Um, it's been, been faced some pretty cool stuff so far, but they haven't even touched some of the real Dutso stuff. That's going to be the next two Fridays. Um, that is the only one-shot side quest that I will have time to run this year, unfortunately. So I was hoping to run, like, Krampus at least once, but I don't think I'm going to have time for that. And, uh, yeah, so that's all I've got going on. Um, I do know starting in January, we'll be running, um, Wild Beyond the Witchlight, uh, on Thursdays. There are three more sessions left of Skull and Shackles, followed by a Skull and Shackles post-campaign nice. like hangout where we're all just going to hang out and talk about the whole campaign and memories and all that kind of stuff should be pretty fun um and then rhyme i believe has only three, three sessions more. left yeah three i more. think i think rhyme and um yeah i think they're both going to end the same week back to back Damn. back to back yeah. back to back campaign finales oh man so that should be exciting um and yeah that's a uh, rhyme post-mortem as well Oh yeah, I definitely want. Yeah, I definitely need to. Nice. Yeah. Sounds good. Do we have to do it in character? <laughs> if you want, yeah, I think so. so. I think that makes I, sense. I think the question what you were fishing for was, do I get to do it in character? So, <laughs> yes. so, so Wednesday we didn't have rhyme, and 
I told Volpe, I was like, I was like, well, looks like you get uh, four hours of IRL Hellebore LARPing to make up for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so they, uh, there was a lot of crying. So. Uh, <laughs> anyways. Um, all right. Cool. Then did anybody have any other announcements before we adjourn? Uh, Orpheus Snacks is going to be starting up a while beyond the Winchlight as well. That myself yeah, and yeah, we're looking for players. Yeah, myself okay. and and uh, once we anymore. yeah, I think we're we, we're caught up now. Okay, we so be starting like next week is session zero, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it'll be Friday, right? Oh yeah, this Friday. Yeah. So yeah. I think nice. that I think that they are a pretty good DM for that because they kind of like um, kind of zany and uh, and. <laughs> Like they, they Orpheus, they, what? <laughs> yeah, no yeah. Orpheus leads hard into hijinks and silliness, so I think that is like the perfect campaign for that. So I hope, I hope it goes really, really well for you guys. I will be playing a Japetan. Is, is anybody? I, uh, uh, I just decided I'm streaming playing it? a Ratling. Yes. Ratling oh, investigator. Yes. Oh, that's dope. Is anybody else uh, streaming it? Um, Orpheus will stream it, and it, uh, he said Ooh. I will. I might try to do it again streaming. This I, I had you zero DM zero yeah, issues wow. tonight. Yeah, he he said he's DM streaming. Get to get to see how he runs his yeah his uh, okay. DM set of things. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, watch. I'm running mine as close to the book as possible to challenge myself to not change things up. Um, so I'm gonna try to run as close to the book as possible. I've only changed the entire backstory and underlying plot and theme and then layered in aspects of right. um world of darkness but so, the rest of it by the book but yeah but the rest <laughs> of it is 100 percent by the book so there, there is a carnival yes 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 yes, yeah. yes. but yeah mine has a slightly different premise than the two premises i premise i premises um proposed in the book so nice. i'm pretty excited I'm pretty excited to see other takes on it um and then i'm very excited to run it so i'm gonna be running two of them si side by side one irl and then one online so should be fun mm. all right sounds good all right hope everybody has a good week and we will continue uh baby quest uh next week all right everyone have a good night all right night everybody all right, night, night.